Aww. 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 Son of a bitch. <laughs> Sophie's choice. <laughs> The rest of us get pulled out and shot. Always yeah. a bridesmaid. <laughs> Always a fucking a bridesmaid. It's only my neck tattoo. <laughs> Always a bridesmaid. Can I this like a hardcore dummy? No. Yes. Can I cup this like a pair of fucking delicious balls? <laughs> I was, wait- I was waiting for him to land that one. <laughs> I was like, he's getting there. He's getting there. There it is. Balls. Hey, buddy. Ball, ball. Hey, buddy. Damn, you hear the beat he's throwing out on Mike's leg? Bat, 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 bat. I didn't know he could fucking wag to a click. Rhythmic slapping. <laughs> he's got more timing than most drummers I've worked with. He is a drummer's kid. Aw. Look was that, that. Is that the that was from the Sandusky all trial? In. All in. <laughs> I, I heard rhythmic slapping. <laughs> I was in the sh- it was I was in the showers and I heard rhythmic slapping. <laughs> this is all staying in. Are you a dog guy? Or nice. Oh, yeah. Okay, I was gonna say the. Do I get they usually find today the guy that's no? not a dog? Guy. I don't think you we want some. I don't care. I was just making sure I wasn't like doing something wrong. Yeah. No, I just, I want to make sure I hear everything. Yeah. That's going on, but they're not long enough. Oh. <laughs> heard that Actually, plenty of times in my I, life. I guess like this. Yeah, you can lick my face. Come over here. Give, <laughs> give Elliot headphones. I would literally do the entire podcast like this. Like, Dude, can oh. we get him one? Of, can I get him one of those collars? If we do rough justice that way, I was talking about. Can I get him one of those collars that looks like he's wearing when like a, a small bow tie? Uh, he needs one. <laughs> or so they think they make them when they actually have like a long tie instead of a bow tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want him to look professional. I've seen him on cats. They gotta have one for. Get him, him a lapel mic. He'd wear it too. Where would I put it? Get, on the get a cordless one so you can just run around. You can listen to him. Yeah, get one of those like headset mics. Like oh, he's so in a have, fucking. Like, uh, those Johnny on the sp- uh, street uh, interviews. Yeah, you can just be like uh, the, the action reporter. <laughs> It'll just be jingle, jingle, jingle the whole time. Lots of. What's the state of the backyard? <laughs> you just have like. Little... <laughs> this is a great dude, idea. Take him, we, dude. We take him to protests with a little microphone on his collar, and just have him stare at people, and just wait for them to say something. And normally it'll be something fun and out of pocket. Well, all right, yeah, all right car crash but uh i was telling it starting to tell this story before we started about the first time i fell in love ninth grade we were supposed to uh, dissect uh fetal pigs for, for class and uh i got what I, I got suspended for fighting i was three days out right so i was going to miss it completely this girl i was just friends with in school megan egan when i got back then three days later she goes to her locker. She says, come to my locker. I got something for you. She hands me a plastic glove and it's tied off at the top. I'm like, all right, what the fuck's this all about? She goes, look in the index finger. And inside the index finger was a severed fetal pig snout. Ugh. And I was just like, I want to marry you. You were <laughs> the greatest person that's ever existed. And then she ended up dating some really fat Puerto Rican dude. And I was like, damn. If I was Puerto Rican, I would have had a is there, is there a backstory behind me. her, like, Could've giving you <laughs> she knew a piece that of I pig? Was, she knew that I was looking forward to it. Ah. And she was really bummed out that I got suspended before it. And yes. then she's like, well, I don't want him to miss this. What? So she severed a pig snout, Whatever, secreted it away into a plastic glove, and held it in her locker for three days until I got back. And if that's wait not love, well, I don't know what is. Why didn't you make your move, like, right there? Uh, because I was fat and a coward. <laughs> so instead she went with somebody who just wasn't a coward but fat yeah it seems and like he she's... honestly looked a lot like me except for the fact that he was Puerto Rican mm. fat confidence he was like mm. oh yeah he did look like a cholo when I met you it's true but Boy. it wasn't that I didn't have the shade to go with it no I, mm. we both had big stupid plastic glasses like the ones like the Dahmers but not with like the weird rose tint like lenses god damn dude Dickies oh. work shirt, only button all, on top. All the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the the khaki Dickies, not even Dickies, khakis, they were probably just Dockers, cuffed at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Low top blue Chuck Taylors. I was going to say Cort- Nike Cortez. No. Nah. Chuck Taylors. Chuck Taylors blue, low top only. What happened to the swag? Where did it all go? Uh, they don't make those in Behemoth. Sure they do. I think they Dickies makes make behemoth, behemoth gear? They do. Really? Dude, yeah. yeah yes, maybe I'll bring it back. Go to go to any working gear. Are working gears still That's open? Where I yeah. Go. There's more on Kirkwood or Foreman yeah. Mills, and like yeah. you've got your pick yeah, of the litter. St- definitely still on Kirkwood. Definitely it's still yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why I stopped doing that. Right near the Star Gas Station. Mm-hmm. I also used to do the one button thing with shirts that weren't Dickie's work shirts, and that was weird. There's like some weird ugly colored like sort of flannel shirt. I've done just one button. Before. Yeah. But they were like. I'm just gonna do it so that I don't have to have my gut all. 
compressed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just comfort. It's comfortable, but when the summertime, your neck sweats. Well, I wouldn't wear yeah. a shirt like that in the summertime. Well, I was fat. And I don't know if you know this, but in fat people, they wear layers year round most of the time. And shorts in the uh, winter. Yes. Mm-hmm. But surprisingly, not shorts in the summertime, which no, is strange. Absolutely not. Yeah. What was the the one meme where it's like, I saw a fat guy walking down the street with a towel over his shoulder? <laughs> that means spring is coming. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh because I do that. <laughs> um, every, sweat. every time uh, when we did Iron Price, we would stay at a hotel. I would rob as many of the towels as I could. Oh, those were our stage towels. Stage towels. Oh, yeah. I we mean, yeah. everybody needs those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I would just we have it, so many. I would have them around my neck like the whole time we were out and shit like that. Dude, when we when we play, I, I keep a towel tucked like hanging out of my shorts like I'm a football player, like just yeah. so I have one to like yank out and like Set yeah. list on your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Fucking, like a fucking hey, gridiron. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Exactly. Also be a good band. Um <laughs> oof. Speaking of towels, I was telling Matt this when we went to the liquor store a little while ago. I saw this at the liquor store like two or three days ago. And um, there was this – traffic was held up in that shopping center, which is not a horrible thing to do. But I just realized what it was. It was a person in a wheelchair trying to go across like a couple lanes. And it was just a guy just with one foot like dragging, like pushing himself along in his wheelchair. Scooting. Oh, it wasn't a, an electronic one. No, it was analog. It was he analog. wasn't using his hands. Yikes. He was just using his yeah. foot. Yeah. I was like, this fucking guy. Sometimes. And I, we were, I was just kind of like pissed off about it, even though I, I wasn't driving, so why do I care? But on the back of his, you know how on the um, back of wheelchairs, a lot of the uh, handicapped people will have like a towel? Yes. Like okay. across the back? You borrowed it? No. It <laughs> was. <laughs> the towel was... I don't know how this was ever made or why it was ever made, but it was a Smashing Pumpkins Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness Whoa. beach towel That's awesome. across the back of his fucking thing. I was just like, bands make beach towels? I what don't the fuck? I totally <laughs> remember that. Like in a, what was that? Rockabilia catalog or whatever? I, I got a Motorhead Orgasmatron towel from there. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I vaguely remember weird merch. <laughs> downstairs. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because I was at Melancholy Infinite Sass was the era before bands started like printing Coke mirrors and shit. But yeah, I was just like, what the fuck, Apparently dude? Not. This dude's a fucking sad rocker. This is awesome. I instantly <laughs> lost all fucking anger towards him that I possibly could. Yeah, he lost a foot, man. He's, he's, <laughs> he was Melancholy man, Infinite. He's mopey as fuck. Fartless. Sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> infinite pedestrian. Maybe. Sidewalk. What the fuck am I talking about? I did a, uh, I did a quick five in line at the liquor store today. Killed it. A quick, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did. He had a tight set. <laughs> nice. <laughs> total hot I, I need so we were standing. We were standing. The fucking look on the face of the lady checking us out was so fucking good. Why? But the, the cashier behind me was fucking loved it, dude. Oh man, you killed. <laughs> yeah. So you want to get so we're, stand, we're standing in line, and like I look up, <laughs> and above, like there's there's aisle numbers above each register, right? Yeah. And it says like, uh, <laughs> if you're under thirty, have your card ready. And then it said, we arrest minors. And I said, oh, you got your own police force in here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's not <laughs> <honest enough. laughs> Fucking solid joke, right? Yeah, the lady nothing that, wrong with that. The lady so checked dumb. us out was just like, but the guy behind us is like, Haha, yeah, they would have to pay us extra or something. And I was like, this fucking dude gets it. <laughs> Which is like the most happy thing to say when you're doing your set. Some that people just, I'm talking about. Some people just get it. Yeah, so it's dumb. <laughs> 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 it's funny as shit. It went over really bad with the lady that we whose register we were at, and he was just like, "All right, I guess, uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll go fuck myself." On the way out, he was like, "Nah, she went better than I thought it would." No, like, I, I, think, I think I said, "I fucking killed in there." <laughs> Murder. You tell me a woman didn't laugh at a good joke? <laughs> Sheesh. Got my tight one in there. Oh fuck, dude! It feels good to crush everyone. Yeah, 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 dude. It's yeah. rare, but yeah, that neck beard dude loved it. He did, dude. Oh my god! Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. They are <laughs> always <laughs> with, <laughs> a real stand-up dude, fan, huh? He's gonna tell the dude at the dry cleaners when he goes and picks yeah. up his fedora yeah. later. Yeah, yeah, he's just gonna be like, "Yo, this dude, 
I don't know, he might be the funniest person of our generation. <laughs> yeah. Nah, he's going to steal the joke. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that, oh, that motherfucker. He can have it. Yeah. He can have it. It's fine. Oh, so it's for the world? That's yeah. nice. That's nice. That what, that's probably why she humble, laughed. Humble she yeah. knew yeah. he was going to steal the joke. Yeah, maybe he's a regular and she there. Gonna and she knows he's going to be coming oh, there no. every oh, day. He works there. She clocked it. Oh, yeah. He was a worker. They're both going to steal it, and they're going to. it's just going to be a war. Ooh, it's like yeah. I, he said it in my line. It's like yeah, but I'm the one who laughed at it. <laughs> I didn't laugh because I was gonna steal it. What mm. if she? What if she fucking just grabbed Matt by the car? I was like, you don't fucking get it, dude. Dave's gonna be saying the shit for months, and he's gonna Dave's kill got it. No over- original material. <laughs> he's gonna he just it into the the ground. He's gonna beat it, beat it, beat it into the goddamn ground. Do you realize what you fucking done to my lunch breaks? Look <laughs> on <laughs> just pleading for you to stop. She's just like, say nothing else. I'm forty nothing. hours a week with this motherfucker as it is. Just out, out loud. She's like, oh no. <laughs> she looks me out. Please leave. <laughs> Don't ever grace our doorstep ever again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh we brought up when we all got here about the uh john Wayne gacy and hitler art and how much it's worth did anybody here everybody here watch that nickelodeon documentary yeah, of course. Not not i didn't want not yet. Watch it yet it's no. it's no, in my queue for yet. sure no. well spo- it's dark spoilers for anyway one of the, the one guy's a foot guy yeah from what here's I, the best thing like he goes into the shit about how he's a, he's really is a bad dude like He's got a foot fetish and shit like that, but he's also was shitter fucking a bunch of kids. Well, I was going to say, kids. foot fetish alone is, is whatever, but if it's a kid's foot. Yeah. That's yeah. Problem. And he also Trump. raped a bunch of, like, well, yeah. that was the young acting child guy. If it's a kid's anything. Yeah, yeah yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. that guy. But also, they all had a, uh, what's that guy's kid's name, the, the main kid that he shitter Drake fucked? Bell. Drake Bell. Yeah, Drake and Josh. Jake and uh, Drake. He was like, yeah, he, I had my, I think it was like his 14th birthday over to this guy's house because he had just the space for it, I guess. But he was bringing people into his bedroom and showing them all the artwork he had. He had several paintings by John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> and he also had a stack of fucking letters, letters of correspondence between him and John Wayne Gacy from prison. One of the best parts about that was one of the paintings had a long note on the back, to my friend, Brian Peck, signed John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. Huh. So, and he was, like, not, like, secret about it. He was just like, yo, check this out. And he was, like, showing all these letters off and shit. I was like, kind of looked like John Wayne Gacy, too, didn't he? Yeah, he had the same body shape yeah. and yeah. shit. Like, fat and, like, but his face was thin, except for the real fat neck. Mm-hmm. So like, he was geez. taking his John Wayne Gacy fetish all the way up to John Wayne Gacy. where he would kill them. <laughs> but yeah. he wouldn't, He wouldn't like, finish. He wouldn't. You actually wow, would yeah. yeah. that motherfucker. But it was just funny that, like, he thought he could impress, like, Pre-team kids with John Wayne Gacy merch. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck do like these kids from all that know about fucking they don't, John Wayne Gacy? They They're posers, about, bro. They don't care about serial killers yet. Fresh cuts, fucking losers. He was in on the true crime <laughs> shit early, yeah. before it really blew up. Ah, damn it, dude. Well, all the all the critiques I'm hearing from people are like, are from the kids who took hush money. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're criticizing. These kids for not speaking out. Like I'm hearing a lot of like victim blaming, not from people I know, but like all the shit I'm seeing, like re- reading and seeing online is like everyone saying like, oh, well, this kid took a payout to like kind of keep his mouth shut. And it's, it's like their kids. Yeah, it's like you're given like a preteen, like early teen kid, like a check for a, an amount of money he's never even fathomed before. Like mm-hmm. can't blame the kid for having a conflict of interest. And especially if like they're in that just started puberty age when everything's awkward and embarrassing mm-hmm. they're not gonna want anything to get out exactly so or, or their parents are stage parents true Th- there was a lot of that going they knew on it was happening and <clears throat> because they were getting rich off of it and they're fucking monsters most of the people that spoke out in the documentary were this it was the kids but it was also the stage moms and stage dads who kind of weren't stage mom like they were there mm-hmm. but they were just like instead of being like well, that's showbiz. They're like, no, fuck that. No, 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 no. And didn't uh, yeah. didn't Homegirl from iCarly like blow the whistle on this shit like years ago? A Which one's iCarly? Jeanette McCurdy. Yes, the blonde. She's she blonde in, in, the, her, in her book. Because she, yeah, yeah. she was, yeah, she 
aired out her own mom, obviously. Yeah. And like talked even, about even shady shit going on Nickelodeon like mm-hmm. years ago when she was like severing ties with like the whole business. Yeah. And everybody was just like, whoa. Like, she was doing it on the fucking podcast circuit. Yeah. yeah. And, every, and everyone was just like, okay, oh well. Like no one really she's, dug any deeper than like. She's very prominent in that documentary. Her and like, remember how all that was like kids like between a certain age, but they had that one girl that was like hella young like she was like single digits when everybody else was double digits yeah, yeah, yeah. she's also very prominent and like yo this shit's fucked up you know damn shit happened stuff. to her that's the one yeah Am- but nothing like, she heinous. was like popular then amanda Bynes was came keenan in on and it? then what? she was keenan on it she none of the big, like, none of the only runner. really big name that chimed in was drake bell okay he was the big get yeah i mean that show was this, I, I remember he's like a rockabilly guy now right sure I yeah he, something yeah they showed him like playing guitar on stage and I didn't really get a chance to really ch- hear what what he was playing, but it was one of those fat Gibson hollow bodies, so I assume that's what he was playing. Yeah, it checks out. Yeah. For a minute, him and Teddy Boy Greg were getting into it. Uh, does anybody remember Teddy Boy Greg? No, that name like is familiar to me. Barber guy. Yeah, racist oh, barber guy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. But he kept yeah. going at Drake Bell. It was pretty awesome. He, he, had a bar- he has a barber pole tattooed down his nose and then swastikas and shit all over his face. Yeah. Of course yeah, he does. He's, yeah. he's a barber. He, he's a huh. uh, <laughs> was a Philly punker. Oh, I was going to say, is he from South Jersey? But and you just nailed he, it. Now that. he's in Russia. Yeah, he, huh. he moved to Russia years ago. Why yeah. would a neo Nazi go to Russia? Yep. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but it's funny because, like, that whole dude, the dude they really play up that that documentary is about that Dan Schneider guy. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a piece of shit. Don't get me wrong. Class. Well, yeah, Dennis Blunden from Head of the yeah, Cat, yeah, yeah. Head of the Class. As, as a fellow fat person with the name Dennis, I got Dennis Blunden a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> but, uh, they play him off like he's like the what it's, who it's all about, and yo know, he's a dickhead and he's an asshole and he was just a, really just a piece of shit. But he never really did anything physical, at all. Yeah, he was just like uh, emotionally just an crazy. asshole. Yeah. yeah, and then like that's the first episode and kind of the last episode out of four. The middle is this dude that's just sh- like shit or fucking kids all over the place and and a couple other like stagehands that were like molesting and mm-hmm. shit like that. And I'm like. It's great that you're showing this Dan Schneider guy in a light where, like, we can expose that he's a piece of shit. But putting him in the same documentary as a guy that's straight up raping, it's like you're kind of showing this other guy as, hey, he's an asshole, but at least he didn't, dot, 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 you know? They did lay out the episodes weird. Yeah. Yeah. I would have done one, two on the Dan Schneider guy. Yeah, ramp, three, ramp up four. to the yes. like sexual abuse. Yeah, yeah, not do episode four on the guy who was just mean. Yeah. You know, kind of like just, how Last Dance was. You, yeah. You, you, What's you that? Tell me how it ended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, it went backwards. Uh, the Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls. Oh. Also, we're all at the age where like we saw it happen live. True. Like, I remember <laughs> everything that happened. Damn. So you were a not you were a Dan Schneider truther from day one. <laughs> you know, chill. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, my God. I've been saying it. <laughs> Damn, you're going to move to New York, start a hardcore band. Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> I know we uh, we eliminated the uh, the gifts segment because yeah. we, we wanted to, like, end on a high note. And this isn't so much a gift that is a, as it is, like, a request from Tom that I'm fulfilling for him. <laughs> um, here's your, your Down Syndrome Day t shirt. Yes. That's just what I was talking about. <laughs> yes. Don't hold it up because my school's name is on it. Gotcha. Thanks. I'll look at it though. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there it is. yeah. That's the one where you were talking about in the yeah, group yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my elementary school mascot was a bulldog. My kids' my, elementary. My, like, elementary child. Child. Yeah. <laughs> my elementary school mascot has Down syndrome. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, that's very progressive of your elementary school. <laughs> like, what was your school? Oh, you. uh, it was actually like the the Baxter High, no, the Baxter Elementary uh, Mongoloids. <laughs> like, nice dude. It's just the kids of like, Whitney High. <laughs> <laughs> the Grover Cleveland Waterheads. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> The George Washington smooth brains. <laughs> what are, uh, what's, uh, what's their school dances called? Jesus. Bunga Bunga Night? <laughs> their school dance is them lifting up cars. <laughs> yeah, he grabbing one, bud? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is the bottle opener over there? It must be. Just instead, yeah, instead of dancing, they're just like lifting cars off of people with their superhuman strength. <laughs> <laughs> Not a wrestling match. So, like, do you want to dance? Like, no. Do you want to spear tackle a Chevy F 150? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't know oh, Chevy made the F-150. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it, my high school mascot kind of looked a little touched. It was uh, the McCain Highlanders, like the Scottish guys in the skirts and shit. McCain but it John had, Cena's. But it had a big fucking like bulbous chin and a big old forehead. I was like, he could easily think he was uh, chromed out. <laughs> we didn't have a mascot. I mean, out of all breeds, <laughs> Damn, dude, a bulldog is probably as is, is true close as you can get. What's the one dog that has like 30,000 like breathing problems? Uh, pugs. pugs? Pugs, all French bulldog, short, all those yeah. anything snout. with the, the short snout dogs, yeah, like pugs, one. bulldogs, <laughs> like they're yeah, they're all kind of in the same boat. Yeah, like this schools for like kids with like you know developmental problems. Do they does the mascot reflect it? Like, I, I, I like, hope so. Like instead of having like the Panthers or the Hornets, it's just like like the the Steve Jobs High School two by fours. <laughs> just some just inanimate object. Just hacksaw Jim Dugan high school two by fours. <laughs> the Stephen Hawking power wheelchairs. I don't know. <laughs> the vroom vrooms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Hawking choo choos. Do you think like Stephen Hawking's obviously his name's got ran through the mud because of the Epstein list and all that shit? But do you think it would improve his name slightly? If he was also on like Puffy's list, improve. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's like, I, yo, he's still a piece of shit. But it's like he was chilling with fucking Sean Combs, dude. I think that's it kinda, would. That's kind of tight. I think it would bump up uh, Diddy. But I think it would do both. I don't know. When the water rises, all boats elevate or whatever. <laughs> High tides fuck. raise all boats. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all sexual abusers rise. Because like top. if you like, as you hear like Stephen Hawking was on Epstein's list, and you're like, all right, so a bunch of other rich people he was around. All right, checks out. A bunch of squirrely old white dudes. But you're like, yo, he was like doing shit with like Diddy and Meek Mill or whatever. You're like, all right, Steve. All right, man. I see you. <laughs> Like have like a nice voice modulated verse on one of their songs. P I P P O P P B I G P O P P A. Damn, I thought you were saying that through the wheelchair, dude. I like that. That was good, dude. That was good. That was spot on, dude. <laughs> you just take that on the fucking nightclub circuit. That was good. Um, yeah. What about our topic? Did anybody do the the big four one, or did that just go over like a fart in church? I couldn't think of four. I me either. Oh. And I think everybody, my four, like, I'm not, like, a huge metal guy. So, like, I think my four like, would be, like, the big four I, now. I try. <laughs> <laughs> I would only switch out one. I try to think of, like, contemporary anthrax? metal four. bands that aren't, Testament. like, okay. bar rock bands or, like, butt metal bands. And, like, aside from Slipknot. How do you think of Slipknot? Who, or, or, like, even, like, to a lesser extent, Lamb of God, who are the two that, like, we're like my one and two. Mm-hmm. Who else do you put in that tier where like you could fill an arena with? Oh, arena. Hmm. The the so, way the way like Metallica, Slayer. I'm also was talking about like influence. Uh, well, yeah, same thing. Like, yeah, you can. I mean, if it were yeah. 15 ish years ago when there were more I bands got, like kind of playing that style and like getting big. Before, I got, I got one. What's that? I got one. They they can't fill an arena, but their influence is undeniable. Hatebreed. Hatebreed now. They you could, could, they you could, could be in the conversation. I hear what you're saying, but I think they they would also draw out the same crowd as like what he was saying with um like Lamb of God. Yeah, but and they're not filling an arena. Like they yeah. might sell. They they wouldn't sell out that MSG. Was, so what what are the what are the uh, rules here? Like what are you? Well, you know how like, I'm trying to put them on the same level as like metallica megadeth slayer anthrax in their prime i mean as far as like what they were so doing as far like, as influence as far as popularity um so even even though i don't actually really care for them that much we well, don't have to care for them you just gotta i mean you gotta, you gotta they're put, you gotta put pantera in the mix there they're, Matt, now there's point. a conversation to be had. You got to say Big Four in 2024. I oh, would you're not. talking about bands uh, that are current. Yeah, I would uh, not put Pantera. Uh, 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 I, I thought you just meant d- a different Big Four. Because Pantera yeah, was active thought. and at their height when the Big Four were still the Big Four. Oh, so so right, you can't. Right now, I don't really have much of a concept of. Because honestly, I had Napalm Death on mine. I don't know if that was because of just my personal love for them. I think, the that fact that I think so. They would also. Well, I, I also personally Napalm love Death them. influences but so not, many bands. Yeah. That, 
but they're not as popular. Not bands that would, yeah. That's a different big four. It's a very niche, like. But also look at the original big four. Like, Metallica is still a worldwide name, right? They're Walmart. Yeah. But Metallica is a planet of a band. But is Anthrax? No. You know what I mean? So it's like be like along the lines of that. They're like, very popular. But sure, no. they've influenced tons of bands. No, like no doubt about it. But I would have I, I would have never had Anthrax in a big four to back start. Yeah, in like I the agree. late '80s, early '90s. I, that's where I would put Pantera. I would sub in Pantera for Anthrax as much from as the beginning. I for Megadeth over Metallica, I would not have included Megadeth. Uh, they're they do numbers though. At the time though, like at when the that, time at they the time were. Like, don't you think it was kind of like the same? They like, were deservedly in that. Well, yeah, they were like the big shit then. But it's like, but as far as influence, don't you think a lot of the bands that were influenced by Metallica were also influenced by? Yeah, but that could be like the Venn diagram of influence and. But that shit could like be that. said about like Testament because he said he would put Testament in there, and that, which I wouldn't True. disagree mm. with. But that could be said about that too. So if you're looking for four unique entities where they all occupy a different space, I think you're getting away from. The yeah, big four grouping. Because I think what kept uh, Anthrax separate from the other three was they kind of had like a mostly a party vibe to them. They and spawned a whole goofball thing shit. Too. Yeah, they started more, pizza thrash. They didn't really take themselves as seriously. And what kept Slayer kind of off from the rest of them was the darkness. The darkness of the old shit. Like they were straight up. A straight up and down number one adjective evil yeah. compared to everything else but and people thought then again think it's fucking badass megadeth also had a lot of politics mm-hmm. yeah i i think we're having a very nebulous conversation like it's hard to yeah it's hard to pinpoint like what the criteria is and nowadays because the market is so flooded you can't chisel out for because the thing is definitive bands that are like I agree with you. A ones. big four in the way that you could in the eighties when it was a little bit more of a narrow stream. I'd say the last ten years though, or even before that, or last twenty years, I think you're right with Slipknot. I agree. A lot of metal bands now, there's way more bands in metal now that were influenced by Slipknot than yeah, were because by Megadeth. You can find new metal bands, hardcore bands, mm-hmm. death metal bands, like bar rock bands, like you can find bands of every like "Quote unquote heavy genre that could say they fuck with Slipknot." Yeah, I had it. Like, what's record. another like? And Slipknot, much like Metallica, well, I they mean, were in, the next Metallica. In, yeah. in my in my opinion, like that first Slipknot record fucking rips, and just like the first couple Metallica records are timeless yeah. and still influence like young kids That's who weren't true. around for that wave. But like what's another band then that likes Slipknot? Is there? Like could you You'd have to get into new metal territory. I, yeah. 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 There's, just being there's, like, there's no other that. there's no other new metal band that that like crossed genres as well as they did. Yeah. It's true. Because Cross they drew, genres? No. They drew so much so much influence from like legit Hessians. metal. Yeah. Well they 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 did the same thing with like you said Metallica was a planet of a band. They are. I think yeah, yeah, and I think even though I'm not a fan, like they've got a couple tracks, but yeah. I'm not a fan. But they've I got think, riffs. Yeah, but Slipknot is on that level. Yeah, yeah, they they are. They're Slipknot. a lot of. They're also a, even though I don't like them either, but they are pretty much a gateway band for a lot of sure. the musicians that sure. are out there doing it now. Yeah. They literally have a gravitational pull about yeah. them. Like bands that they bring on tour mm-hmm. start to succeed because of the exposure. Like they a lot get. of the bands that are out now that we all like, it's like maybe they are not fucking. What are they called? Maggots. Mm-hmm. They're not maggots now, but you know when they were like fourteen, fifteen, or whatever, they definitely oh, were. I mean, yeah. you, you go to. I mean, even like if you're, if you're tying it into hardcore, you go to a hardcore show now anywhere, and you take every single person in that room and say, "Who was your first heavy band?" They're all gonna. Say, most of them are going to say Slipknot. Yeah, yeah. probably. Now. Or I think or Hapery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even older or people. Corn. Like maybe not as old as old as us, but like maybe like early thirties, late twenties. They'll be like, "Oh, I saw Slipknot play like Ozfest as like my first concert," and yeah, that's true. that that was like the switch that went off where it's like, "Oh, these like riffs can be this heavy." Like, okay, yeah. like I'm gonna dive deeper into shit that sounds like this. Yeah, it's true, and also like. You know how like in, like back in like when we were younger when metal and hardcore wasn't as popular, people were wearing Metallica shirts. You didn't bat an eye. Mm-hmm. 
but people were rocking like a corn shirt. You're like, nerd, like get out of here, you know, and shit like that. Nowadays, it's a you can buy a, you can buy a corn shirt at Target. Yeah, and like Slipknot is like same thing. Yeah. You can see multiple Slipknot shirts at like a local hardcore show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on people that are like young. Uh, often you'll find at least one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And honestly, I think it's cool. Like it's awesome. It's yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's everybody came from somewhere. And yeah, what also do I do like about the Slipknot fans is that you know how like the shit like you first cut your teeth on when it came to heavier music. Looking back on it now, which is actually a topic we're going to get into in a little bit, is uh, you're kind of like, yeah, I used to sound like that. But most f- people that grew up like as Slipknot fans are very unapologetic about their love of Slipknot. They'll still wave the banner. It's like, hey, you listen to Slipknot? They're like, yup. You're like, all right. <laughs> They're like, I just, I just listened to Eyeless Driving here. Yeah, what of it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Whereas uh-huh. I was like, right. yeah, you, you, you can't listen to corn. You're like, no, I'm sorry. You, you can't <laughs> deny the sound of that self-titled record. Like, if you're not a fan, you still can't listen to that record and say that it's like, um, it changed aesthetically everything. bad. When like, it came you, out, you I was like, I was, I know it's a thing I say a lot is it's inoffensive. The one drawback to me was always how the really dumb vocals. But I was just like, this isn't as corny as I thought it would no. be. But I'm never going to listen to this. But yeah, oh. What do you got? I mean, they they changed. I knew it. What? 99. What? When that, rec- when that record came out. The, ver- the first one? Mm-hmm. What do I think was earlier than that? A dis- there's a discussion about that Iowa record, too. One. The second Nothing one. wrong with me. Two. Yeah. Drowning Two. Pool? No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that one. I couldn't tell you a single slip my song. Wait, no. There's one called Wait and Bleed. Yeah, that, that was that the was music like video. I don't know shit that was the about hit. them. I think they it's called trash there's, cans. There's one that yeah. I play trash cans. You know what's fucking sick about the dude who plays trash cans, though? He gets, like, an equal cut as, like, he's the same okay. American guitar player. He so he so this, is, this was my age-old question that I will always ask people, and I'm glad it's it's getting brought up now on, on a recording. Who had the cushier job? The clown in Slipknot that just bangs on a trash can <laughs> I think we're or, or a beer keg or... The dude in the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones that just skanks on stage. We just we talked, just about, talked this. about this. And I, Clown, boss, obviously. No, no, I disagree. No, dude I, I disagree tones. as well. I disagree. All you gotta do is skank and you get a fucking equal cut. Here's Have you thing. ever skanked for a set? So wait, are you going look at Boss Tones? No, if I, if I knew I was getting Slipknot. like a six-figure no, no. check for it? No, 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 dude. Team Boss Tones. And I'll t- this is one of the reasons I'll tell you why. That guy was fat. Right? Also, no matter what time of year it was, no matter how the temperature full suit. Full suit. temperature was in the venue, yeah, sometimes he had plaid shorts, but he always had like a full like wool suit coat. Yeah, they played warp tour. Yeah, they were staples on the like, warp tour. Yeah, which I'm would be saying like July, that job August. is much yeah. harder. Oh, you said your team Slipknot. Where yeah, that, was... that job is cushier. Oh yeah, that okay. was the question. I don't know. Well, man, then again, three piece suit against coveralls and a leather mask. Did yeah, dude? I'm sorry, but the coveralls that material is way more breathy. Like. Breathable than, breathable than a suit, a fucking yeah. wool suit, and that's with a dress shirt and, underneath. By the way, and that way. was a dude that was fat, old, and was a heavy, drank and smoked. That job is yeah. hard. That dude put years in, like when people was like a little oh. doughy. He wasn't like fat. fat. So, so he, he wasn't like, in shape. He was doughy as a word. Yes, here's, here's the real thing. Everybody, close your eyes. Switch their roles. <laughs> now imagine that. I see it. <laughs> I imagine the dude from Boston was like. <sighs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he doesn't have the ice up his legs at the he's, end of the night. I got pictures. Make, to prove it. Like he's got a fucking. <laughs> that's the thing. That guy's been around since the the dog days of that band. Yeah, he's one of the only like fucking like constants. How has he not gotten like ridiculously exactly. in shape? Because he lives hard, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he lives fucking hard with a I lot of. Like average. you got to go on the road like <laughs> 200 days Bolucci. a year and skank yeah. nonstop. You yes. think he would have like this fucking shredded like P90X body? No, he just sweating it like, <laughs> like you're basically Apparently doing not. like aerobics for like a two hour set every night. All right, here I'll, I'll piggyback off what Matt just said. He's burning thousands your eyes. of calories. Close your eyes. And now it's their headlining set at Warp Tour, right? Shows their sets over. How good does that suit smell? Oh, does he have a gig suit that he keeps putting back on? Do you think the boss knows fucking just rock What's- around in fucking full suits? No. Once that show's over, those just probably go backstage and strip. Dude, Scott's a lifestyle. No, they just put on a different <laughs> <thing. laughs> That's a great point. This actually. is a lifestyle, not a trend. That's actually a great point. So, yeah, that dude. 
So people are like, oh, that guy just fucking makes all the same money as everybody else, and he just fucking skips on the fucking stage. I'm like, no, nah, that fucking dude is earning. He's, working. He's putting in work. All yeah. right. That dude's earning. Because we were, we brought it up the last episode we had when we were talking about Avail, because they had a similar guy. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But I that dude totally used to always rock him. around with like sleeveless shirts and little shorts and stuff. So you're like, all right. So at least he has like... He was, the, he was like a hype man. He also had the clothes for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was the hobo yeah, flavor he like flame. Yeah, <laughs> Boxcar Willie. Yeah. He could nod out and you wouldn't even question it. Yeah. You're like, ah, there he goes. Look at him, man. He's a fucking crazy guy. <laughs> There's here. a Vale's train punk again. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Vale got off a fucking coal cart. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to play the set. That's how we got into the Boston Zone. <laughs> That's how it yeah. tore yeah. yeah. the, the one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> yes. I remember one, time I, one time I saw that band Magruder Grinds. Yeah. Uh, play. They played the Barbary. And a bunch of fucking train punks showed up. Yeah. Said, yes, they did. And of course, they didn't have any money. And like, no one who no, was like didn't. down to get into the show was like gonna pay for any of those fucking dorks to get in. <laughs> Fuck no. And then like mid set, <laughs> one of them somehow got into the show, and he got on stage during their set and was doing just that. Like he was just kind of like hanging on stage, like. I don't know how you're <laughs> fucking a hobo with like a big pot belly, but his pot belly is like hanging over his fucking dirty ass Lots pants. Lots of beans in his bindle. Yeah. And he's just, <laughs> he's just hanging out on stage. Like, he's a bush. Uh, man. Where can I put my stick in bindle? <laughs> so now, guy, can somebody watch my dog this. while I do yeah, this? Yeah. Yeah. And and they're on stage just like ripping through their set, and there's this boxcar hobo is just like vibing out on stage and they're just like whatever and they're just going through their set and this guy like literally just won't move off the stage and, and like it's a Magruder grind set so there's like dozens Damn. of people like running across the stage stage diving yeah. stage moshing and he this guy is just like standing there yeah he squatted the stage he had squatters rights on the fucking stage well Matt and I saw um, we went to a show it was Napalm Death Cannibal Corpse Immolation and Magruder grind was the opener and we watched all the bands, and everybody was great. To, and like, nothing like crazy happened on stage. But you got when we got in, where it was Magruder grind was going on. The place smelled awful. Of course it did. Or it smelled no, no, it was, Why it was exhumed. <laughs> it was exhumed. No, this is a different instance of stinky. Oh, okay. But um, Magruder grind goes on and it just fucking reeks in there, right? And then as soon as Immolation's setting up the place second and stuff like that, all of a sudden it's like. Oh, I can breathe again. <laughs> Apparently, people had just shown up, watched Magruder Grind, and fucking bounced out. Or Magruder Grind themselves smells so bad that they filled an entire like theater. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> they don't strike me as stinky people, but yeah, they're like clean they're cut guys. Punks. They don't. That look... was the same show that girl shit herself in front of us. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you, you told that Napalm story death. on yeah. the episode I was on. I remember that. Yeah, she just fucking deuce. I think one, one time I saw Agalock. I think Brent's ex wife beat her up that night. Probably the stinky nice. girl. Yeah, nice. one time I saw Agalock, and there was a like. <laughs> crust train hopping young lady in front of me and she, while she was headbanging her dreads kept coming uh, back and, and like, that like there was like a car wash you know the, that um, happened at the yeah the, the Zoom show you were back. telling us you're about because remember the fucking i was pissed off because it hit my lip remember <laughs> uh, uh, we're at the, and it just fucking hit my lip and i was like nah, nah. A, i would have had a full-blown panic <laughs> yeah yeah oh, oh, like, i would have been like i'm getting I'm at got, all. i got a stomach bug now <laughs> like i'm, cold I'm not a big, like, three weeks i'm would, not a scared of germs guy but yeah, i would be I second guessing very myself unhappy with be that. spraying yeah. lysol in my mouth yeah actually yeah. like fucking ace ventura i fucking fucking kissed einhorn fucking listerine fucking windex or some shit it was brutal yeah shocker the agalock crowd wasn't the clean <laughs> yeah, you gotta be kidding me. God, I always wonder like how those people got into like paid to get into the show. It was like fifty dollars too. Damn, because those napalm the napalm show and that exhume shows they weren't cheap either. They were like bucks. bottom like bottom. Well, tickets, it's like, like thirty. It's like how do junkies like living in a train yard like afford their habit like. They, they find make, a way, man. They find like, a way. Right. They're, they're a resourceful bunch. Those uh, finds burners. a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they go to the guy at the door. Do you have a ticket? Nah, but I got this copper. I got this copper wire. <laughs> yeah. I got this got yeah. shopping cart yeah. full of pipes. Yeah. I got yeah. the back of a dryer. Get out of here, bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told, I told my story. Can this AC compressor get me I in? I told my story on here 
uh, a show we played up in Mass yeah. about the girl with like the trash bags full of cans. Oh man, <laughs> with pee all over. And she's like, "Oh yeah, I'm collecting all these cans to save up money." To uh, I was when Chaos and Tejas was still a yeah. fest. She's like, "Yeah, I'm collecting cans to cash in, so I have like extra money to get down to Texas." I'm like, "Those cans behind that wall over there?" She's like, "Yeah, there's a ton of them." I'm like, "That's where we've been going to pee." <laughs> Did it stop her from picking them up? <laughs> she didn't fucking Fuck bat an eye. <laughs> Yeah, them she already smelled like tea, so you know. <laughs> now, did you ever see one of those crusty pull girls, up, and they're like the surprisingly the very beautiful. attractive? Yes. She, if she, yeah. if she wasn't a crusty, she would have been a ten. Yeah, she was like legitimately attractive. We've talked about this. What the fuck's the the Chelsea cut? The haircut? Yeah, oh, yeah. Some some of them girls pull that shit off. Yeah, Chelsea girls like skinhead boys, dude. Like seventy seven? No, no. Okay. No. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about, but no. I know what you're talking about, but no. But uh, the Chelsea cut? I understand, but no. That, For some reason, <laughs> that, skin- that genre of music's going to come up later when we talk about but skinhead girls, shit dude, that don't hold up. For some reason, they always have the biggest butts. And those oh. black denim shorts. Oh. oh, yeah. Or even just like that's the regular wear, jeans. That's because they wear those fucking mom jeans that makes everyone look like they're dragging God, a fucking wagon, damn, man. dude. That's a great point, they're actually. Always got, like, they're always the like... boots and they're stepping on my nuts. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, they're just, just spitting on me and I'm yeah, tumming yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. telling it's me I saw from Jade. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, well, fucking but Jade reference. Boots. It's like, you see them in their fucking... You know, uniform Fred Perry's and like they're fucking, they got A cups going on. But for some reason, the back of them is Dominican as hell. You're just like, damn, dude, yeah, what the fuck, dude? There's a comic shop up by your house. Yeah. And uh, the, one of the girls used to work there used to dress like a skin. I don't know, I don't know if no, she she's was. The, the owner? Yeah, I don't know if she was one or is one, but the, the, she had a fucking wagon. That, that's the girl that owns the place. Oh my god, dude! When me and Dave used to go up there to get comics and shit, I used to just fall in love every time I walked in the door. Yeah, I was like, "Well, you have access to comics and you got a wagon and you own a comic book." It's shop. like just now take now everything I own. You know, take everything I own. When we lose a couple fingers, yeah. I'll do it, dude. I don't care about your nautical star tattoos <laughs> on both elbows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or the fucking I'm parallel like lines. <laughs> or the or fucking the cherry uh, on your hip. <laughs> the little fucking flash tattoo devil. You know, the fucking little cute cupy doll devil on your fucking it's collarbone. Hot, hot stuff. <laughs> yeah, hot. <laughs> it's got hot stuff. God damn it, dude. Is there a tattoo that's bad enough to ruin a, how good a girl looks? <laughs> a swatch. Swat. Swat. <laughs> Besides, like, <laughs> yeah, but give me a second. <laughs> Let me. Everybody's got a pass. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Can I place my hand over it and yeah, make yeah, coitus yeah. to yeah. pretend it's not here's, there? Here's the thing. Is there girls hot enough that they had a swat? I'm not talking like dead forehead swats. I'm talking to maybe like something on a shoulder or something like that. That you're like, I, I can fix her. You know, just like current just, active Nazi or that's what I'm saying. Or is a she. Um, is she like, oh, I did some dumb change. shit we'll when I was young. Go with both. Say she was, uh, she used to be really into like oi and shit and like when she was like all right. 18 or 20. So current, all right, so sketchy past moving on, you know, nah, because I don't fuck with quitters. <laughs> <laughs> Only fuck girls that are bad about it. Yeah, man. <laughs> Live that life. Ride or die. Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> now, what if it is current? Do you like, like, oh, I like her follow through. <laughs> I mean, we're talking joke here? Or are we talking <laughs> serious? Obviously, we're joking. Uh, None of us condone Nazism except for Mike. He is Italian. They, you forget who they, <laughs> here we were. You forget who they sided with during World War II. No. But yeah, we're all, jo- we're all obviously joking. Uh, I mean, how hot are we talking, man? How big's the butt? All right. I know what your type is, right? So I'm going to lay it out for you. Okay. Pale skin. Okay. Dark, dark hair. Mm-hmm. About a heavy A to a heavy B cup titty. Okay. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. A fucking choo-choo train of an ass. Thighs that look like little redwood trees. Mm-hmm. Saplings, if you will. <laughs> right? And I'm, she's probably about... I'm plumping up like a we'll fucking ballpark right now. She's 5'9". <laughs> okay. 
Um, See, that's too tall. Okay, slightly but, Mediterranean. You're a lot taller than me. But so. only in like features, but not in skin. Her skin's like alabaster. Okay. Keep going. I'm okay. almost there. <laughs> but she's got, why are you yeah. stopping? She's got a sw- <laughs> I'm almost there. <laughs> she's got. Right, now I'll, say, I'll oh, even what a lovely tea party. <laughs> All right, look. <laughs> All right, here's her tattoo layout, okay? Because I don't want to make it easy for you. Here and here, I'll cross her well, collar. I was going to say, you can just Swazi. stop describing my ex wife. <laughs> Uh, no, she's taller, five eight. Um, yeah, she's Swazi six here, foot tall. Swazi here, and that weird death's head skull, right dead center. Ooh, right uh, under the, the is, and wait, is she like still like? Maybe oh, she's yeah. maybe she's just a really big Death in June fan. Yeah. <laughs> and she, also believes in Buddhist good luck or whatever. She it also yeah. has the "Don't Tread on Me" uh, tire cover on her Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> well, that's just a bad car. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning. Oh, that's what you took out of this. I'm now, her now thought process. I was looking for something with a tire cover, dude. They don't Not, have those on a seat. Listen, brain. is this a one night stand or am I like, am I taking <laughs> no, her to no, meet no, my no. mom? This is um, <laughs> like Thanksgiving no, type no. shit. I'll say, no, I'll be fair. It's at least a six month relationship. Oh, mm. then hard no. Absolutely not. Okay, but but you don't know it's going to be six <laughs> months. Yeah, hear me out. All right, but can I hide her? <laughs> no, no. For my friends. Not your close ones. <laughs> But, but does she respect your politics? Like you're and absolutely like, fuck, no. no. She's pushing her on you. Oh yeah. So she's like hate I'm fucking out. you. Yeah, but every, I'm, I'm out on that. You can every on time. On my look, own. every time something goes slightly wrong, and like when you guys are out for those six months, like you're out in like public. Every time something goes slightly goes slightly askew, she goes typical of them. She doesn't explain what the them is when she's talking about it, but she's always like. Oh, obviously, those you guys. You know how they do it. They're yes, exactly. drawing a line no matter what. She won't out and out say like a slur, but she'll say shit like that. For argument's sake, how good is the sex? Dude, um, she's nuts. It's going to be all awesome. Yeah. Um, Damn. Your butt crack sweats while you're fucking, but it's, <laughs> the dome's so good that it sucks the sweat back into your asshole. Yeah. <laughs> she threatens to suck your dick through your asshole. So you have I'm gonna cr- suck your dick through your butthole. You can crush an entire like one of those like office <laughs> space water coolers after you fuck because you're that dehydrated. Even after she's done blowing you, you still are drying your balls off for three or four hours. I'm at a real crossroads right now. Yeah, yeah. You- <laughs> See, I don't want to make it too easy. I looked over and Tom was like, "You've got me. Willing- you- you've got me willing out. to make compromise. I didn't so I was willing to make." Yeah. <laughs> I literally took layers off today. <laughs> it's like you're looking at your parents like, well, they're not visually un Aryan, so I could pass them off as... Like I said, if, if this was just like some... like My mom little... is my in, dude. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> She's off the boat. Yeah. I feel like that's worse, though. If this was just like some little like side action I was doing and like not in a committed relationship with... I feel like that's worse. Yeah. How? I just feel like it's worse. We're talking to a have six... a committed relationship or not have a committed relationship? To not have a... Like, to hide, like just to kind of hide it and push it... Like... I'm saying, like, you know, like, maybe I'll... Are you saying because... Well, maybe I'm not hiding it. Maybe I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm smashing this just, chick. It's nothing serious. You're not advertising. But you're not hiding. Yeah, I'm, I'm not... Are you making it official on Facebook? No. Yeah. Oh, absolutely no, not. No, 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 absolutely no, no, no. not. But there on, might be pictures... On wait, True wait, Social. Wait, 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 are you wait, tagging parlor. her in memes on Instagram? <laughs> yes. And also, occasionally... Uh, memes about the fucking pictures woke Pictures of you virus. on Instagram, she will be in the pictures with you. Not all the pictures, but a good amount... To where, she's people, around. to where people go like, are Larry and, you know, Helga. You know, um, Helga. <laughs> I was going to say Pelgar, but, you know, okay. Are they so hard a, posts or like, are they story posts? Stories. Just stories? Let's go stories and every single one of them is just like you two. She's, her, none of her tattoos are visible and none of her politics are visible. This is like you guys out in the Longwood Gardens looking at, you know. But, she, but she's shit. tagged, so people can click on her profile and see oh, what yeah. she's up to. And mm. she's but not. But it's private, and it is just a death in June like fair, fair song enough. lyric. Fair enough. So like, that's yeah, fair. that might be sketchy. Yeah, she's private. That's fair. They do be having private profiles. That's true. Mm. No, not all of them, man. Some of them like to have their shit out there. Also true. Great point. So the I, wedding's coming up in June. <laughs> I've I've seen ones with Facebook profiles where their their Facebook profile photo is the Totenkopf head, and their profiles are not private. At but all. I see you're what he's right. saying. What he says, like it's worse to hide it because that means you're admitting you know it's wrong, and that's why you're hiding it. And you may be harboring some of those same feelings. And now here's the thing: say you do follow through with it, and it's a, a good relationship, and your friends are like. 
what's up with her? She's kind of, you're like, dude, my balls are still damp. She blew me five days ago. <laughs> yeah. I got a rash, man. <laughs> yeah, I got a rash. Honestly, if you guys told me that, I would seriously just hand you some gold bonds. Like, you yeah, handle it and just, you know, move on. With, keep going. Keep going. Until on, it gets, keep going. There's, until it starts costing you, like, your job. There's crazy girls that could fulfill that need. And not be Nazis. And not be Nazis. Eh, that's yeah, very that's true. Yeah, but the effort of finding them. But that's a different conversation. But They're Re- easier to find than Nazi girls. Puerto Ricans are everywhere, are, dude. That are attractive? Yes. That's true. That Puerto, Puerto Ricans everywhere. are everywhere, man. Come on. He's got a fucking point. Fuck me. <laughs> Just fucking poking a hole. Oh. Listen, you had, me, you had me teetering, which is a My lot further no than... across the boards. We're still gay. talking about like a, <laughs> literal, a literal white whale of a white girl, though. We're mm. not talking about... like. Oh, she's a white whale, all right. Yeah, exactly. She's definitely no killer whale. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's only half, it's still too much. I forgot what the question was now. It was so long ago. How long? Like, How long? Would, would you? Oh, would go, I? Go into like, let's say six months to a year relationship like, mm, with nah. a girl. You're losing me at Where a you got to carry on like a normal. Well, I'm not saying like you go in, you don't go into it knowing in six months it's going to be over. It just happens to be six months, and none of you know that it's going to end in six months. So it's not like you go into it going, I only have to deal with this and hide this for six That's months. It's still a serious enough relationship. Nah, I'm, so out. Would, I'm out. All right, fair. I mean, I'm definitely out, but I'm, I'm still entertaining it for yeah. Now, <laughs> like I said, you can, content. You can, yeah, here's you. the thing. I'm going to keep putting stuff on this until you guys all admit that you would. Because <laughs> <laughs> my next thing will say, like, all right, she's going to support you for the rest of your life. The rest? Yeah. Why? Even after breakup. Because even though she is a Nazi, she's a philanthropist. Mm. Mm. They they do love money. Yeah, it's true. Because they got to get away from Soros. <laughs> Ironic Soros. if you think about it. Yeah, you think fucking Soros has any hot daughters, granddaughters, great granddaughters? <laughs> I don't know if that guy's like nine million years old. I'm, I'm trying to think of what. Uh, Honestly, I would fucking uggo if she was related to George Soros just so I can get in. What is Soros? Is he like? George. What is he? What isn't he? He's a shapeshifter, fucking lizard <laughs> he's a, man. Yeah, he's a rep. He's, he's a an, reptilian. He's an Arcturian. He, yeah. <laughs> he he's lives at cool the center of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's Hungarian, so he's definitely got hot hot daughters and granddaughters. And yeah, stuff. it's true. Definitely. Who true. have loogies when they walk outside? You know what I mean? <laughs> or do the former John and they're really easy? Like, and they're yeah, really damn, I'm fucking mean. chubbing up again. Yeah, <laughs> they're really mean. <sighs> Damn, now I yeah, damn, Smoke that'd be a lot. like team no Nazi. Because if I can find a way, I'll take Soros' ugliest daughter or granddaughter. Because he's like, he's ninety three. Would have to be my age. That's true. Yeah, I take the ugliest one. I don't give a shit. I just want to like so, uh, Papa. Just, uh, <laughs> can I hang out with him? Yeah. You know, Hanukkah's coming fuck up. Fuck your way into that inheritance. <laughs> I don't even care about the inheritance. Can I, I just want a space in. laser. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. Yeah, I don't yeah, give a fuck yeah. about his money. Yeah. yeah, I want his fuck the fringe benefits. I want to vanquish my enemies. <laughs> I want to reenact the, uh, the end scene of uh, Real Genius. Oh, oh, I was thinking of the Independence Day. Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Topical. Why do, have, why do you have that toy on your head? And can put it anywhere else it shapes. Stop playing with yourself. <laughs> Kern. Kern. Oh. I can see you, Kern. What a fucking fantastic it's movie. It's such a good movie. <laughs> ah, damn it. Shout out Val Kilmer, dude. Yeah. What do you yeah, think he's doing right now? Prince think, Val. He would, think he would date a fucking virulent Nazi? I don't know if he's doing a whole lot right now. No, but. no. no <laughs> What's wrong with him? He's got throat cancer. Did you guys watch you the see movie? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where I was going. Yeah. Does that mean his dick doesn't work? It was I, that, I he's, he's barely alive. I think yeah. his yeah his dick has diminishing returns at this point. Ah, you get a good enough Aryan princess in there. I mean, he is blonde hair, blue eyed boy. What a great movie! He is always last fifteen minutes. Stuck. What? Yeah. Wait, which but which movie are we talking about? The second time, the, the newer Top Gun. I Top still haven't seen it. Still haven't seen it. Was, was it. <laughs> it was good. No, it was. Whoosh! Oh, cool! It's an airplane. It is cool. <laughs> you just made me like it more. Yeah, I kind of made myself like it's it. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, somebody like, didn't have a oh, Somebody's driving an F 15. Now, here's one, well, here's one thing that I'll tell you. Pedestrian is blowing up. Here's, here's something that'll make me fucking <laughs> sound like a complete piece of shit, like hypocrite, but more than usual. What? When I was a little boy, 
Mm. Top Gun won on, S- any, on NES, right? Everybody remember Top Gun on NES? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> my dad was a huge fan of it because my dad was a Navy man who worked on an aircraft carrier. Could he land the, the plane? No, nobody can. Nobody can land I've the plane. I've done it once. Dude, shut up, you fucking liar. Once. What's that like? Dude, Why? Japanese kids can't even do it. You can't do shit. <laughs> and they you know fucking math. liar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can spell, bro. But what my dad used to do is he would set up a chair in front of the TV and set me up a chair in the behind him. Fuck yeah, he did. And when he was like in battle, he would like, talk to me, Goose. And me as a little boy was like, fuck yeah, this is awesome. I'm Goose. Damn, you're Goose. That's I wish I was Goose now so I could hit my head, hit the canopy, and just break my neck. But <laughs> Dude, remember in the first one when Tom Skerritt was like, and when you get to the ship, they don't give you a Rio, let me know. I'll gladly fly with you. Damn. He's going to be the radar guy in the back. <laughs> fuck me. I just got, I got chills just saying. <laughs> we were inverted. <laughs> <laughs> Hottest volleyball scene of any movie ever. Uh, you need to see uh, the new one. What <laughs> is it? Even they, more. They, There's they, an even oilier, oilier. They, they fuck each other through the net. Oh, dude, show. <laughs> uh, you want to see? Uh, I want to see Hollywood and Wolfman just go at what's, it. What's uh? What the fuck's the dude's name? I can't remember now. Who? The guy that was in the new Top Gun. Miles Teller. Tom yeah. Cruise. You want to see Miles Teller just oiled up? No, nah, mm. his head's weird. He's from uh, around this area. He is. His head looks like uh, Jeff Dunham's jalapeno puppet. I'm not looking above his neck. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> Fair. Dick neck. Bye, yeah. 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 Ain't looking above that stalk, son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm looking at root and root only. <laughs> <laughs> I love him like I love my vegetables. Strictly root. You're <laughs> 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 my turn up, boy. Oh. I keep going. I got my little parsnip. Ricky Rubar. Anyone need one? Ass is completely out. I mean, completely out. He's when, got neighbors. Not out there. Yeah. Don't. He's got a dog. Stop. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> poor Ellie. <laughs> Do you, you think Dennis should be a suspenders guy? Rainbow huh. suspenders. Maybe. Why not? Inside or outside of the shirt, though? Does it matter? Yeah. Outside. No, 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 inside, because then it's a surprise. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're like, fuck, <laughs> didn't see that one coming. He wears no, I feel like suspenders would chafe your nipples. He wears an undershirt. I don't need them anyway, though. No, just get yeah, some of that, like, runner's fly shit that Ren uses. <laughs> That's true. Let's put it on your nips. Bless my nips. It's like, it's like, why not at this point? Just get some of those nipple covers that marathon runners wear. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he wears an undershirt already. All right. No, he's going to wear the suspenders, then the undershirt, then the outer shirt. Mm. So, like I'm saying, you Why? need something to prevent chafing if you're going under the undershirt. Because we're having fun. Okay. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Because it's a party. <laughs> you're right, actually. You're 100% right with that one. And he's not going to apply a topical cream every day. He, no, I'll Dennis, do that. he's just. <laughs> with my mouth. He's just going to stop wearing them. <laughs> you know why? Because effort. Thank you. <laughs> For the listeners out there, Dennis said he's right from the toilet. I'm, I'm going to boost it so they can hear that. <laughs> At this point, though, it's like, why not? Because belts clearly fail him. All right, good. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut it. It's because it's he's, he's cursed with narrow hips. It's mm. true. And no cheeks. He'll tell you. Or I will by he's, myself right he's now. Got them, yeah. He's got them long boys, man. Mm. He's, he's got long back. <laughs> <laughs> he's also right. <laughs> the only part of me that isn't big is my butt. Got that long back. He's got that, that long crack, dude. <laughs> he's, he's got an XXL butt crack. That crack. That sure. crack longer than a work day. I got an XXL butt crack on XL ass. <laughs> God gave Tommy all the butt meat. Dude, it's true. Speaking of root vegetables and suspenders, Matt and I played a show with his band. I forget what they were called. Root vegetables. Uh, but Terror Inc. Yes. I kept calling them Terra Patrick. Ooh. And nice. uh that's a, they had this intro. They had this right song. There. Like they started their set. It was like a horror punk type band. They started their set with like this intro, right? And no singer on stage at all. Just guitar players, bass player, um, drummer. 
And right about the time the actual song was supposed to kick in, this fat dude in skin tight jeans, suspenders, and a root vegetable flop haircut, hell yeah, slides out on stage like Cosmo Kramer, and just starts grabs a microphone and just starts headbanging like vi- like violently while they're playing like the fucking rock and like, bat 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 beat in the background. Best part. Oh. Big bag of beef jerky in his back pocket. No, that was a different band. No, same band. It was the guitar player or something. And that was the Optimus Prime band. Was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Same he show. He had a big bag. Uh, of same ja- show. He had a big bag of Jack Links so in his back pocket. So many noises. <laughs> Sounds like that show was chock full of fucking entertainment. Um, the singer from Optimus Prime was this like girl that ended up getting kicked out later for because she was like under- seventeen. Yeah. And <laughs> I've told this story numerous times too, but. uh the headliner that night was Agnostic Front, and it was Vinny Stigma's 60th birthday, and he was hitting on that girl the entire night until she got kicked out. You're like, nice, dude. Good job, buddy. Probably didn't card her. Well, maybe he wanted to get to her guitar player's beef jerky. Hmm. That could be. Maybe yeah, just like kip her beef. He plays yeah. the long game, man. That tracks. <laughs> it's like, but, sure, I'll get a charge and have the register, but you know what? Delicious beef jerky. Yeah, there were some cool, some cool dusters at that show. <laughs> oh, antidote played. Yeah, they and were, they all had a uh, Jeff dust. Caps backwards. Fat, fat, yeah. fat guys wedding hats, but flat, flat caps. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but on backwards and leather dusters. <laughs> the cool way. <laughs> the <laughs> right now. Way. Not nineties uh, school shooter sheets. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> they go for the trifecta. It was like a hot out around that time, wasn't it, Matt? Wasn't it like I a feel summer? Like it was summertime. It was like August. Yeah. Hey, swag knows no temperature. Yeah, you can't break character. It was baby. funny. Our old bassist, Brendan, was like, he disappeared for a while. And then he just showed up at our merch table. He's like, I was just hanging out with the guys from Antidote. And Matt's like, who cares? And just <laughs> defeated him. Just watched his fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh god it was fun i've been there many times i get it like, who fucking <laughs> brags about hanging out with any band <laughs> how much time you got it's <laughs> <laughs> true fair all enough all of it actually sure, all we, the time i could sure. scroll through my contacts list and air out plenty of people <laughs> i was just hanging out with uh strike back <laughs> yeah. flying saucer gang <laughs> yeah i was back i was backstage with redline <laughs> But should we get into the topic? Backstage, yeah. so you mean the parking lot yeah. of the VFW. The room where the one guy who has a birthday, is his Carvel kick is. <laughs> <laughs> you all hang out with Antidote. They had a fudgy the whale. That's kind Yo. of All right, so I'm actually kind of jealous of that. <laughs> you can get those at Acme, though. Or Giant, I mean. Does that make them any less delicious? No, it doesn't. Yeah. Do they have cookie puss? And I don't think so. St. Patrick, I've had. never seen cookie puss. I've only seen fudgy the whale I've at, seen the, at the Carvel pu- freezers. I've seen cookie puss when it was... Near my house, we had a standalone Carvel. It was only yeah. a Carvel. They had a, you know regular ice cream, but that's where you go to get your cakes. And do you remember yeah. during St. Patrick's Day when there was Cookie Puss, but those green instead cookie of O-Puss. brown Cookie O Puss? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And Santa Claus was Fudgy the Whale turned sideways. And uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, Pat Oswalt had a whole. Uh, that's right. I'm stealing it. <laughs> and, uh, I'm stealing the material right now. <laughs> they had Thanksgiving one, the Tom Turkey. <laughs> God, that was just a uh, Fudgy the Whale. Switched over with a different yeah. color scheme too. My wife gets yeah, a Tom turkey it every Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking delicious. Yeah. Still, you crush that motherfucker though. That thing lasts like a week, and I pick <sighs> at it. Some like, of like, was, all week long out of the freezer. Santa the it's like the Simpsons eyes. Sandwich. It's like it's like it's like the Entenmann's box where like the knife stays in the oh, box. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So like I'll just lift it out of the freezer, like tear off a hunk and just eat it off the knife and yeah. put it back. She's like, Michael, where's this red knife? You know exactly where the fuck that knife is. <laughs> where the cake's going? It's in the freezer. It's where it belongs, dude. <laughs> it's just a frozen knife. That's my new metal band. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a good one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Easy rich. Solve a frozen <laughs> yeah, knife. <laughs> Cryo prison. <laughs> that's the worst fucking name. <laughs> that was a suggested name for a cancer priest was Cryo Prison. Cryo prison. The outlaw came up with that one. I that's like where, his, that's where I they were like holding his uh, Wesley Snipes. And in... sacrificial knife was another one. That's I mean that's better than cryo prison. Cryo prison, dude. One word. One word. Don't get it twisted. So she wanted to give it an extra point back in his favor, but uh, that's where they were holding Wesley Snipes and Demolition Man. It's true, the cryo prison, Simon mm-hmm. Phoenix, Simon dude. Phoenix, baby. Simon. Has anybody else looked up how do the three shells actually work? I have, and I haven't found it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I haven't gotten a reasonable explanation. You, just, hmm. you boof them all. Yeah. <laughs> I thought like, you use them like tongs to pinch it out. And yeah, the other ones for scraping. Yeah, I mean, I assume, but I think the only way to but do when, it when you take like a messy shit, how does that work? Yeah, you can't scoop. I mean, Taco Bell did win the uh, 
<laughs> the wars. So I mean, everyone's got messy shits. So then it's true. This fast food wars. Thanks. What if Taco Bell's like agenda all along wasn't like delicious food for cheap? It was just a battle against the three seashells coming into power mm. and That's, taking away their interests in big toilet paper LLC. I think that is their slogan. It's to I live moss. So if you're, <laughs> which is Spanish for I fuck like seashells, that. exactly. That's a little too much for yeah. me. So after your body has consumed too that much Taco yeah. Bell, or the the Earth's population has consumed that much Taco Bell, your shit is just a steady faucet stream. stream yes, where Maybe you don't need to wipe. It's true, and that and all like eventually, we'll, like our sewer systems will just back up so bad that it'll flood the oceans and kill anything that could possibly make no, a seashell. No, it's, it's all liquid. It's, <laughs> you're all liquid. <laughs> 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 fucking got him. Damn. Bodied him. Showed him. Should we get into the topic, dude? Yeah. Bands I, or bands what, or what even genres. I like bands. It's your fucking topic, dickhead. What? No, it was brought up during the chat and by you. Somebody no. Somebody said. I'm Matt sure brought it you up. You brought it up. No, Tom I, said, we, we, all, we all just dildo. ran with it. Big four was and me. And Tom said, save it for the dildo recital. So I saved mine for the dildo recital. And it was. And I said, we should. what are we going to talk about? We brought that up. And it was bands that don't hold up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, yours. I held that you would you used to, like, you would die on. And now you're like, and eh, now you don't. And not for me anymore. Oh, I got so many. There's a lot. At got, first, it was hard for me. And then I just. Like looked what, into admitting that it sucks now. <laughs> well, I looked into bands that I was into at the time when they were around a lot, and then now I'm like, fuck no, I w- I couldn't give a shit. And it was it, well, how it was many much how easy. many bands did you like lie to yourself, like you force like them back when you were like at your peak of liking punk, hardcore, metal, whatever. Like the first few in my years, youth, you mean? Because like everyone you talk to about music, whose opinion you generally trusted. Trust wrote, or wrote not for trust, this band, honestly. and you were just like, "What am I missing?" See, I, I'm I, listening to I this. I, I have ears and a brain, just like all my friends do, who like similar shit to me. Mm-hmm. They're telling me this stuff rules. I'm listening to it. It sounds like fucking dog shit. <laughs> like, what am I not getting? I lied a lot, like because like I remember like the first few years you get into like you know quote unquote underground or DIY music. I liked everything. That was DIY Underground, no matter well, yeah. what the genre well, that was. That was a different time, though, that was too, different. because, yeah. yeah, if you bought the CD, I mean, you had to fucking own it. Like, yeah. you if you it. bought it, you yeah. have to listen to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, you so it's it's a a it was a different time. Also, like, there's no way to find out about When you're bands. first getting into, let's just say, like, your, your early days of hardcore, like, you're a fucking sponge. Yeah. Like, you're just taking anything and everything because, like, just the idea of being into this shit is so cool. Yeah. You just want to learn about everything. Yes. Plus, and this has come up before, too. You're buying it, comps. Yep. You're 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 reading thank you lists yep. of like the bands, the few bands you do like. When and you see like, the bands live, you're remembering what the shirt they're wearing. Yeah, is. you're like, oh, like yeah. that band name sounds cool. That band, I'm gonna like buy oh, their record. Also, as an impressionable youth, we've talked about this too. If a band puts on a good set, you could instantly become a fan. Yeah, yeah. Of having course. having seen them once now, and maybe not listen to them the before. Is like, was there back then? Like when you would find, like, say you went out and bought a CD because you saw somebody else was friends with this band or somebody else liked this band, mm-hmm. and you brought it home and you just didn't like it. Did you admit to yourself and everyone around you that this sucks, or were you just kind of just that's like, kind of what I was getting to? Yeah, it's like I did that. I was just like, yeah. oh no, it's great. And then originally nah, you're like, opposite. You never listened to it ever again. I was, I was, I would be honest and say I, I was didn't not, like it. Sometimes as a I was honest, but sometimes I was like. They, they were so universally loved by everyone else. Yeah. I knew. I'm just like, what am I not getting? Or if like, you what, had, like, what uh, am I not? So I say, I think it also depends on how H2O. cool the shirt was. <laughs> yeah, 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 they're on they're my list. list. They're on my they're list. On my list. Yeah. They were. They. Like, I uh, was the opposite. People were. People suck their dicks to this, this day. I've never liked H2O. H2O. Oh, yeah, H2O was that was on terrible. My list. Yeah. Um, but I always gave them a pass because nope. in the late '90s, when I was going to shows regularly, they're unavoidable. Well, A, they were unavoidable, but they always brought along like a decent supporting cast of yes. bands that they would play with. So those Troc days well, they where they would play the, like every yeah. other month. They ran in the right circles for sure. Yeah, they, would always, on, yeah. Bring, they would always bring cool bands, at least yeah. two or three cool supporting bands. Because those Troc H2O shows was like H2O and then like five other bands. Yeah. yeah. And there would always be at least two that you're like, yo, I need to see that band. But did you guys know... I, like, you, I call it having a shaman. Like when you first get into hardcore punk or metal or whatever, the one older person that shows you mm-hmm. like what's what. 
Now, if that person had brought you a CD, said, oh, dude, you got to check this out. And you went out and bought the CD or you borrowed it from him or whatever. And you went home and listened to it and you did not like it at all. When you went back to give him back the CD or whatever to tell him about the CD, did you lie and say, oh, it was fucking great? Oh, yeah. Just hoping he wouldn't like cut you off from yep. like the information? Yep. See, my thing is, is when I was younger, I don't think I knew enough to say something sucked or didn't. I just... Your ears weren't I, I, like, developed or whatever? I, I, just, I think I just gobbled everything up. Same. And then... Yeah. You know, filed it away in my brain, and then as I got older, yeah, and there's some I started bands. weeding shit out. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yep. But there were the, the whole point of this conversation for me was bands that you held on to for a long time, telling yourself they're awesome, they're good, they're whatever, and then you came to the realization like, wow, I was wrong. You, that's, that's where I'm at. You yeah. just, and I have bands that are the opposite of that, where like oh, I, for sure. I didn't get it back then, and now I'm like, oh, sure, yeah. Yeah. I also yeah. have that. One of the first bands yeah. you talked about on this podcast, Cast Iron Hike. Yeah was one of those CDs that I bought because I'm like, oh, here's a band I'm I, hearing I didn't about. I appreciate Here's it. a band I see Home, in that. Homework and assignment Dennis. number one. And the Victory Bulldog and on it. And the Victory yeah. logo on it. So I'm like, this can't be terrible. And it was in the era when Victory couldn't fucking make a bad record. Yeah, and I remember buying it. But somehow be, they persevered. And being like, I find huh, the world very like, much. I'm not. <laughs> uh, like, donuts. <laughs> well, no. Yo, get, donuts rules. Let's do it again. Don't. Let's do it again. I'm telling you. Right. It doesn't. But they were one of those bands that I heard <laughs> I'm, back I'm when I was you. like 17 and being like, I don't get it. Yeah. And now I listen to it. I'm like, oh, I fucking Ralph get it. Yeah, it's yeah, happened. Yeah, it happened yeah, to me a bunch yeah, yeah. of times. Well, Matt just, I, you know, I've known just, we had, he came into a realization recently mm -hmm. of a band that you That's were. That's what sparked this. You were ride or die mm -hmm. for this band. And I was always like, man, no. And you're like, no, 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 dude. It's fucking good. Give it another shot. And but you recently just what the last couple months came around like yeah I, I just I it had been a while since I'd listened to them and I started early like I'll name the band in a second gotta gotta let it you drag out you, uh, you, first first seven inch and first two full lengths I loved yeah loved and uh, to be fair I might there might be a song or two where I'd be like all right this this is cool yeah downset is fucking dog shit mm -hmm. a lot of people are coming to that realization. Yeah, I was never a big. They, well, the, the thing is, is they're they're touring right now with one one member that I think, and it was like the fucking bass player or something, or the guitar player. I don't get that. Uh, shit. People were like, "Oh, Downsets touring." It's like, are they? <laughs> <laughs> are they? <Yeah>. And <laughs> the guy probably was even like a chief yeah. songrater or anything I, like that. I, I don't. Dude, this I guy. see Mr. Green Jeans. I know a cover band when <laughs> I see him. You bring him up one more fucking time, <laughs> goddamn it! <laughs> it's like when Mayhem still plays shows. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, it, but yeah, is, I, it like, is like I, that. I fucking loved Downset. Yeah. Like, that first seven inch and the first full length. Like, like I remember seeing the video uh, for Anger, which that song's wild corny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But seeing the video for Anger and he had an SSD shirt on, I'm like, okay, cool. I know who SSD is. Yeah. And, like, I kind of was like, okay, this is rappy. I mean, you This know. was also at the height of... <laughs> This was at the height of like the Limp Biscuit fucking. This was like, before. No, nah, yeah, yeah, it was before. before. It was before, before. man. Because th that first downset full length was 93, 94. Yep. Well, what was the second full length? Because um, that speak was a dead that language. Was like, yeah, a dead yeah, language, yeah, dead yeah, language yeah, was, was like my. That's the first one I listened to. Junior year in high school. That's the first one I listened to. And I'm record. like, oh, like this. And that was definitely at the height of like the rap, rock, new metal that shit. Was, that was the 90s. Well, that was my intro to Downset. They, they kind of ran concurrent with uh, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, that, cause this was my introduction to Downset, was yeah. the Do We Speak well, a Dead beefing. Language full yeah. length. And I'm like, okay, like this sounds like all the corny shit that like all the new metal kids like, but it's kind of got more hardcore riffage to it. Yeah. So it, this is acceptable in my eyes. And now I go back and I listen to that record. I'm like, woof. The one thing I did accept about them was the fact that they did have Beef with the Rage Against the Machine, which is a band I just cannot tolerate at They're all. Awesome. But it's just like a. I do like Rage Against the Machine. I like the fact that they went after like the big dog at that time. Well, I guess they were friends or something. There was some yeah, kind of beef. I don't know any of the real history behind the, it. The original. Well, so the the seven inch had. Uh, I forgot what song it is. It's anger. Yeah. It, 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 there's a line in that song you bring, where he actually names Zach. Yeah. He's like, like, what do you know about a set or a side? Never seen a nine or some shit like yeah. that. Like, Clever. he's talking about, talking about Zach. And mm. it's like, all right, so you're trying to punk him. It's like diss, hardcore diss yeah. tracks. <laughs> but, but no, it's just, it just, it, that's what sparked the whole thing. It's like this band did, just did not hold up for me. 
And it's weird because I felt like I've wasted years of my life. Yeah, decades. Mm. I feel like the biggest one for me was uh, Kid Dynamite. Mm. Like, Terrible. I still like Kid Dynamite. I, when that came out, I mean, I you couldn't. But I was also a huge Lifetime. And still am a huge. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lifetime's great. But Kid Dynamite, it's something that, like, I mean, in 19... Uh, I guess in 97, 98. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, if you, like... I think also if you're from this area, too, you were just... Yeah, yeah. if you're from <laughs> Philadelphia, being like, you're... This is the greatest thing I've ever heard. I'm going to love this for the rest of my life. And I, like, it's not like I put it on. I'm like, this is awful. It's That's just, what I'm saying. It, like, I'm just I like, still, eh, yeah. I, I can care. still put on a Kid Dynamite album and, like, not get pissed. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if it plays Inoffensive. as, like, background noise... <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. Like, H2O is the plus. same if way. I play, if I, yeah, I, can, I could probably put on a couple, I could probably pick a couple Kid Dynamite tracks that still hold up, but I'm not going to be like a super fan about them like I probably was when I was... I was yeah. huge in a Lifetime, and I was like, oh, this is the new band with guys from Lifetime, and then it didn't sound like Lifetime, so I was going to say like, no, I'm, no, I'm not, fuck them, they stink. But so I, the first time I saw Kid Dynamite... that worked, and I'm actually right. Because <laughs> much like H two O, Snapcase was like the bi monthly. That's trot my wife first song. With yeah. buried alive, buried Snapcase. alive saves the day. Dillinger Escape Plan and Snapcase. Yeah, Snapcase yeah. was the headliner, and Snapcase was. I mean, and I still like Snapcase. Buried alive went on as the doors are opening. Yeah, I missed yeah. half their set because everybody the did. line went around the fucking block. Yeah, everybody yep. fucking did. But I remember, like Dillinger Escape Plan and Kid Dynamite. That was the day I was introduced to those two bands. Mm-hmm. They were the two bands I hadn't heard of. Cause I'm just like I remember being in high school and being like look like sh- looking at the actual paper flyer with like, friends of mine. Yeah, and I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm like, who are these other bands like f- like fluffing up this fucking lineup? Like, just get to fucking saves the day and fucking Snapcase yeah. and uh, like Bur- I knew Buried Alive because that was like right when that first record came out. And I'm like, I- those are the three bands I want to see. And then I had a couple of friends be like, no, 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 you're gonna want to see these other two bands for sure. And seeing Kid Dynamite involuntarily was what turned me on to them. The vocals bug me. Just kind of, he, this may sound weird. I'm like, this guy sounds like a brat. <laughs> like, he's just a whiny little brat. Yeah. It's, You're just like, no. But oh, kind of what they were going As far as the hill for. I would have died on, that was like yeah. my number one. I, like, if you would have told me, like, yeah, when you're 43, you're, you're going to go, nah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's really any band completely where i'm like well there is one that back in the day and i'm not talking about bands that now you don't fuck with them because of my my example was gonna be was gonna be sick of it all yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) but also but on this on the sick of it all right there's sick of all records that i listen back to now that i'm like this is not good Built to Last. I like Built to Last. It's yeah, not a good record. I like That's that. all the bands on my list. I'm doing that. It's just like, well, my list, well, there's a lot of bands on it that's like after a certain point. That too. No, you know no, no, like, no, no, no. I'm talking about you throw the, the baby out with the bathwater. It's all dog shit. I'm kind of. I'm uh, that's, where I'm, that's where my mind was at. I'm 50, I have 50. like Hatebreed and Mabel. Because like, I got a ton of bands that I only like one record, but I'll still ride or die like for that Hatebreed record. Like Hatebreed after, after uh, Satisfaction, no thank you. Mabel after Demonstrate that's, My Style, no thank that's you. That's not really what I was talking about. But this, but you know how like certain bands like. I, I, could, I could name you, a thousand bands. You like kept that. going like. I, I can no, name, no, no, it's good. Even though the last two albums were utterly terrible. I can name an entire genre. <laughs> I, can, I like, have that on here too. It's pretty much. Oh, or, oh yeah. Any pop punk band that isn't Snuff or Lagwagon, I can't put it on anymore at all. Like, and I had a lot of Fat Records releases in the '90s. I had a yeah. lot of those CDs. Yeah, but all, all that ones. like skate punk stuff, aside from Mill and Collins, Penny Bridge Pioneers, I don't Mas- revisit any of those records. That's a skate punk. That like, it is. I can I can listen like this time of year, especially mm-hmm. like your teenage still, bottle rockets. I still put on that. Mill and Colin record and it still and holds up. that record. But nothing else from that pool mm. holds up even at like a percentage point. Um, also, th- since you're familiar with the record, worst album art of all time. I don't know. I kind of fucked with it. You're fucking out of your mind. <laughs> anyway. What's the album? It looks like? Penny, Bridge, Penny Bridge Pioneers. It's like a shitty like oil painting 
of them of, like on scooters with like an explosion it, it look, behind it, It's them. like one of those like old like action oh, yeah, movie no, no. posters <laughs> where it's like their four oh, faces. This yeah. is funny. It's terrible. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. <laughs> it looks. I remember the album before It looks that. like bad AI. You it's know what so ruined Millie for me? Is was, that that now? What's the one with the We're in the monkey booth. I don't know. Four monkeys, right? Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't hold up. Well, but, it's but, not offensive, but it's ruined, not something uh, I would Colin for me Dave was Heck. Dave Heck's love for Mill and Colin. And he was like, <laughs> that makes me love Dave Heck more. He was a Mill and Colin punisher. He's got a tattooed on his hand. Yeah. Oh. You got the, the little chicken from Life on a Plate. Like, you know how Tom's ex was a paramour punisher? Dave was the same way with Mill and Colin. Hmm. It's he just would like, message me every once in a while just to talk about Mill and Colin. And you're just like, God damn it, Dave. <laughs> he knew well, you would. Let's, let's, you, let's, let's talk, talk about... Years and you're like, this is what you want to talk about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. seriously? Yeah, four monkeys. Yeah. It's, again, it's, it doesn't offend me when I hear it, but it's not holding up. What like order did we start? And we went, Matt, Larry, are, you're next, right? Well, yeah. Let's talk oh, about like, early aughts, uh, like Bridge Nine style hardcore. Oh, yeah. I, could, I think I got one on my list. All the West Coast ones. Right, right now, as we're recording this, Mark Green's eye is twitching and he doesn't know why. <laughs> Oh, he's got a lot so of to fucking explaining to do with his fucking. Well, no, like he still rides hard for that style, like you know the right brigade riffs, but Joy Division lyrics, like that kind of shit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, like I, American Nightmare. And we get it. You're sensitive. Again, <laughs> during that time period, like I was a victim of the period where I was like, most of this shit fucking rocks. Nowadays, I, I go back and I listen to it, and I the lyrics are so cringy that I can't get past. But you know what I think the difference was well, that that lyrics. Like those were the shit for us back then, because we're all roughly the same age, other than Tom. Is the fact that we were coming out of era where everything was just fucking ignorant as hell, just mad, chesty dude. Like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into that too. Like gangster shit, and eventually you're like, or just like some really just formulaic, watered down, like you know, like brotherhood, you unity, yeah. straight Stabbed edge, in the back. and you're just like. <laughs> yeah. We all just needed something. You're still singing about getting stabbed in the back, but now you're singing about with your flower, girlfriend stabbing with, you in the back and not your friends. words, yeah. You were kind of just like, I need a break from those styles of lyrics. Yeah. So this was kind of like that. What rhymes with noose? <laughs> noose? Caboose? Uh, Those uh, Canadian hardcore bands uh, singing about again. noose. <laughs> um, also, around that same time period, there was a lot of accepted bad hardcore. Oh, yeah. Um for you know certain factors that i won't mention um you know mostly just like hardcore politics got a lot of bands over yeah mainly just because of who they were as mm -hmm. individuals yeah. and like you know what circles they ran with yes yep. and because like you would go to a show and you're like why is this beatdown band that can't even keep time with each other opening this sold out mental show <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then you look at all their matching hats, and you're like, oh. Oh, uh, yeah. So there was a lot of bands in that pool that, again, okay. every, no one wanted to admit they were bad. No one wanted to admit that this band. Because you were afraid to. <laughs> yeah, you were afraid of getting fucking murdered. Because you couldn't just okay. say, you know, I'm just, this is musically, it's not for me. You couldn't say that. You couldn't even say that. Yeah. You couldn't even say, like, yeah, like, I get it, but it's not my thing. Yeah, like, you talk shit. You're like, like no, exactly. it's, it's not for there's me. A, it's there's too a portion of that when I started. Yeah, yeah. It's, it still-happens now. It's, it's not it's, a dead... It's, 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 not, it's not as, like, out on the table yeah. as it is as it, it was. was though. It was, though. Oh, hell yeah. So, oh, it's hell. just, like, a lot of people weren't willing to even say that much. No. Especially, I'm guilty of it because, I, again, if, I didn't want to fucking make anybody upset that I didn't need to make upset. If you're a person in a band... Yeah. You didn't want to say because you, you don't want to affect your ability to get booked. And again, mm -hmm. I've always yes. been in bands too, so yeah. I'm like, I'm not jeopardizing a the other members of my band who had nothing to say, yeah, nothing bad to say, and b like I want to be able to play locally without horseshit. Yeah, that's without, that's where I landed as a resident of Delaware, playing shows in South Jersey and Pennsylvania all the time. Yeah. I kept my fucking mouth shut all the yeah. time. So it's like and was a, a lot of a lot of unnecessary hardcore scene politics. Allowed a lot of really nice. god awful bands to just Fuck fly yeah. under the radar and like get props that they didn't necessarily deserve. And again, I'm guilty of like saying like, "Oh, this band was good. Yeah, this this fucking beatdown band is really fucking cool." It's, people, people no, the was, fuck they're not. It's, pe it's people funny. I was friends with and in bands with who were buying merch of them and wearing it all the time. I'm not like, all yeah. of them. Like not yeah. all of those bands. Were, 
were bad. Yeah. Were, I mean, like... Some of them have their moments. Th- there was one band that I used to always get shit for not liking, and I still think they're fucking terrible. And I was never... It's funny, because I was always kind of reserved on some of the bands I thought were horse shit, either because, A, I wanted to be able to play shows, and, B, I knew guys in the bands, and they were actually friends at that point. But one band I could just never... I couldn't find a way to even lie and say they were good was Bulldoze. It's like, I'm sorry, there is nothing redeeming about this music. Don't care for it. Yeah. All. It's just boring to me. It's I mean, I, I know that they're a big deal to a certain sect of whatever, but... And it, I like it super blip. Neanderthal, caveman, oh, yeah, me too. Same. Hardcore. It's, it doesn't blip on my radar. But that, no. is, it was just like parts thrown together. But the, 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 the thing is, is every band that came from those guys after that... Was great. Was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Fucking uh, Train of Thought, Agents of Man, all that Homicidal shit. Was Homicidal was awesome. was like a better version. It was like an actual musically talented version of Bulldoze. Yeah. I got a pee-pee. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. Another band, this was a 90s band mostly, but they were just like, you couldn't find somebody in this area that didn't like this band. And I, at the time, I liked the one record of everything else I thought was dog shit, but was uh, Vision of Disorder. They've, they've, I revisited them a couple days ago. They flipped flopped for me. And what did you think? Um, I mean, the thing is, is I was always kind of on the edge with them. Yeah. Um, I think they've got really cool songs, but yeah. I don't think they have an entire full good record. Yeah. It depends on the day for me with that band. Like, I could like them, I could not. Well, I, I so I put on the self the Green Drop record yeah. first. Yeah. It's and the only it was one like 50-50. Like, half the songs were, were okay. Some of them were bad. Was yeah. So live. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're yeah. great live. Yeah, but I went back and listened to Still, and I was like, "All right, this this rules." I do like a lot of Still. Huh? I just like the Green Drop one, like four or five songs on it. There's some I good love... songs on the uh, the one after. I forget. The and name. it was funny that they did that new metal shift, and people just it wasn't like, even so nope. much new metal. It was like almost like Stone Temple Pilots. It was weird. Man. And everybody was just like, "Nope, sorry." The first time I ever got to see them was at one of the East Coast tsunamis. Yeah, yeah. that was that was uh. 12? 13? I don't know. I don't. It, I, it was probably about 10 years ago. Doesn't but matter. Right? I brought well, this yeah. up in the... Uh, but, like, sorry to... But, the like, their set did not go over super well. I was like, I was like this is the band? Because it had been so long. Yeah, nobody cared. I was at that show, too. It just, it just... It had been too long, and it was just a random show. Like, I, I feel like they were just like, hey... Because... Didn't Mushmouth used to cover yes VOD? Well, they covered that so long. DTL. And, they, and they booked that. Fe- so it's, it's cool though. Like, exactly. So, but I mean, like they yeah. obviously they really love that. But band. it was kind of like just for them. You think? But uh, yeah, I mean, Probably. there's a lot of booking that's just self serving. Which yeah. I'm not saying that was or wasn't, but um, it just makes sense to me. It's like okay, yeah, we're gonna we want to throw a little bit of money at some of these bands, trying mm-hmm. to get a get that hasn't been gotten yes recently. Because I think VOD played one of the early. This is hardcores. But uh, a- anyway. Um, you're you're right. They did. Yeah, yeah. And I just I just remember at that tsunami fest, they just went over like a fart in church. Yeah. yeah. And I thought they were good. I mean, I they liked were it. very proficient they musicians. They left right after they played. Oh, they yes, they my did. Spot. <laughs> well, every single dude oh. in that band, none of them went on to do anything nice. hardcore related after. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, still on VOD. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was it Devil Driver? Was the band Blood Simple? Blood, Blood Simple. Simple. Yeah. Man. But you know how like I was saying like how bands that we all like would put out bad records and everybody would be like, oh, they're still, they still got it. Like, this is their best one yet. That lie. I think <laughs> it was only true to me that I remember with, <laughs> with two bands, H2O and VOD, was when they did a complete shift in not only the style, but also the oh, mentality. Everybody said, no, fuck off. And like, and how they like <laughs> yeah. per- went forward with the band where everybody, we, hardcore Y was just like, Absolutely not, and they were just gone. <laughs> H two O go. My God, H two O go. And uh, what was the name of the second? From, from Bliss to Devastation. I thought it was the one before that. It's the third record. The one. No, Imprint was the Imprint one with the red good. cover. Imprint was the good record. That that one was. I think I don't because like that one. I, it's pretty I bought, gnarly. It's my, like production's crazy. Yeah, my intro to VOD was Imprint. So I thought, like, yo, this band yeah. fucking rules. So I worked backwards to the self-titled. I'm like, this album doesn't rule. This album's super fucking, <laughs> like, it, it, not- has good, it has good songs. Uh, I wouldn't even go that far, man. <laughs> I remember even being, like, The songs I said, like, don't hold up anymore. Even being 17 and, like, loving everything hardcore, I was like, yo, this album kind of stinks. But, again, they were one of those bands. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to admit it. Because yeah. the other album that was my intro to them, which at the time was the current state of the band, yeah. 
I was like, I'm going to stick with what they're doing yeah, it was now. Like 98, I think, yeah. when Imprint came out. And it's like, the reason why New Metal Kids loved you so much was because you were a little something different. Yeah. You had just enough, like, singing flavor metal seasoning. Riffage, but yeah. you were something different that, like, that's what was attracting kids over to the hardcore side. You went full blown New Metal, and New mm-hmm. Metal Kids were. We're just like, no, no there's we, no more bridge. Like, no, we have enough new yeah. metal. Thank you. Like, you don't need to do that. Like, you abandoned the one thing about you that made you cool. Mm. On what you're saying. And then they, they jumped back to hardcore, and hardcore kids were like, no thanks. Like, well, you- they came, VOD came back within the past 10, 15 years or whatever, put out a couple records. And I've only, really? I've only, yeah, I've only listened to them once. Yeah. They put out two records, I think. And most and people don't even know they exist. But most people stopped caring. And I did listen to them, and I it was like, okay, this sounds like VOD. It just yeah. sounds like the rest you, of their... You passed up your window of opportunity. Yeah. And they tried to circle back. And yeah. Then- well, I think what got what what Dunn did got them was... Remember when OzFest started paying attention to hardcore? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And Hatebreed, VOD, okay, and some of the it. others, like um, Candiria 2. Earth Crisis. Mm-hmm. Earth Crisis. Fury Lost. Lost. <laughs> and, like, all those bands, like... Hellfest, not Hellfest, Ossess was paying attention to them, and all of a sudden they were catering to the new metal crowd. A lot of the people were just like, all right, well, fuck you guys then. But it's weird that, like, Fury of Five somewhat survived it, Hatebreed survived it, and actually flourished. Yeah. But VOD. They're the one who made it. VOD, everybody was like, nah. And like, fuck you, not doing it. A Life on Slaw still kept their fan base after that. And just like for some reason, VOD, everybody was like, nope, can't come back. Everybody else, they're like, fine. Well, then Hatebreed didn't I think really VOD come had, back. I think VOD had a bad attitude anyway, though. It's at least from what I gathered. I mean, obviously, I, well, that's I they, they, they kind of had they kind of had the attitude like they they came back expecting to be welcomed with open arms, like and, H2O, and they were like they were welcome. offended that they weren't. Yes, like H two O was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but. It's I also, feel like H2O got a warmer reception back in the hardcore the thing than is, like, did. Some of the dudes in H2O, even when they had, they had were pretty much blowing pop punk as a whole, they still had dudes that were you would still occasionally see them at a hardcore show, or they would occasionally play in like a hardcore one-off band or whatever. Whereas VOD, they never took part in anything hardcore other than VOD. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like all like, right. I don't know. I don't know VOD's like early early history that well, but it's like. I wonder. I, I, sometimes I wonder if they were even really no involved in hardcore at all to begin with, or if they just happened to be like a cool heavy band from Long Island. The one thing I will so say, so they got invited to play like the one thing CBGBs I will say about them shit. is this: uh, in the '90s, if you would go see like Twenty Five to Life in New York, mm-hmm. their singer of VOD, the, what, Tim Williams, the Dreadlock guy, yeah, he would be going completely ape shit and knew the words of every single Twenty Five to Life song. So I was like, all right, well at least you know he actually liked hardcore, but. Everybody else is like they just like a bunch of normies. Yeah, I, yeah. But I think I, I you mean, got one that. foot in somehow to be welcomed mm-hmm. back, and they just didn't but not you, do you that. You dealt with that with Dead and Buried. Yeah, yeah. I came back, and no one. Get, but at the end, I didn't expect people to give a shit. Well, no, I'm saying you you were the guy who was actually like in all the way with hardcore. Yeah, and your band members yeah, other weren't. Didn't go to shows you weren't playing. Yeah, it was so me I, and like, Jay Money, and that was it. Well, you you didn't acquire Jay until later on. Way yeah. later on, like the first couple um, lineups. Yeah, the first couple them. lineups. It was the only person in the band I knew was you. Yeah, because the other guys didn't leave Delaware, and when we would go play out of state, even if it was just someplace they, super they close, steal by. my shit. Well, not even that. Well, that's he's a different story. But I'm talking about the other guys. They we would just talk to anybody. They would go. They would sit by the minivan that we had and just talk to each other. They wouldn't go out and meet people. Mm-hmm. People would come up and try to talk to them. It was like, oh, hey, what's up? And they'd just be like, <laughs> and it's not that they were like rude or pompous. They were just had socially awkward. The people yeah. skills of a thumbtack, and this is yeah, it hurt them. And that's why. That's one of the reasons. It's like. I've ended up finding out from our drummer Vince that they went with Tingle because he actually guested on a, a Dead and Buried song before he joined the band and his vocals did not sound like what he did with Lifeless at all. They went with him because he had almost the same set of friends that I did. <laughs> so they knew that he's had some sort of hookups and the only reason they kept Jay Money in the band was because he had the social skills and the connections. And, and then he's, those and two... And a sweet baby. And that's why when those two split off to do... Uh, lifeless and everybody else did bottom feeder bottom feeder did not do well at all 
and Lifeless fucking went fucking countrywide, like in, almost instantly. I watched both things happen simultaneously. Yeah. But the bottom feeder bottom? went fucking nowhere. The bottom feeder did Kevin well. Kevin, our guitar player, and Sometimes. Vince, our drummer. Vince is a great dude still to this day. I mean, I, I don't know how they did outside of the general area, but locally, they I I always saw them do well. Bottom feeder? Yeah. Yeah, Who's but they didn't. Who bottom feeder? John, John Ren. John Ren. John Ren. Yeah. And John was a good dude, and he actually mm-hmm. had connections back Who then. Who I would assume was like the social chair of, exactly. of that band, just you like know, you I were. I love Len, but Len's not a real social butterfly. And Bakuda was too busy snorting perks and stealing <laughs> shit. But Pat. yeah. <laughs> Pat. Well, this is pre-Pat. I know, but Way I'm just thinking Pat. they didn't get, they didn't improve their social status. No, not at all. With Pat, so yeah, that hurt them. But yeah, I think with VOD going back to VOD, he's like they left hardcore and didn't keep a foot in. Whereas H2O kept a foot in, whether it be crew affiliations or friends or whatever like that. A foot and a half. And other really. bands that kind of were able to come back. Whereas Hatebreed, they somehow did not really too much keep a foot in the hardcore after a certain amount of years. And still just manage to flourish mm-hmm. and do even better than they did as a hardcore band. Which, to Tom's point from the beginning of the episode, why they might be considered a big four currently. I agree. Much like Metallica is like you could put out a river of dog shit for decades, but they people have. are always going to remember the first couple things you did. Yeah. The only pushback I get to that is you can find someone who doesn't like heavy music at all. And you say Metallica, and they know what you're talking about. They mm-hmm. may not be able to name a song or a riff or anything or what the guys' names are. Mm. I think but everybody knows one. Everybody knows not what like the song, but everybody knows like what everybody you're talking knows about. Knows everybody knows what you're talking about when you say the word Metallica. Where if you go to somebody to say Hey Breed, maybe three out of five will know what you're talking about. That many, mm-hmm. even less, but yeah, probably less. I'd say one out of ten. But I also love that Hey Breed unapologetically left hardcore. Like, people kind of gave him shit at first, and they're like, we don't give a fuck. We're just Justice, making a living. Justice yeah. said it himself. We he don't sa- care. He said, Justice said it himself. Uh, from the outset, he was like, we are going to be the biggest band. Yeah. And he strategically made that happen. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that they didn't need, I, I, I kind of respect this about them. They didn't need hardcore. Anymore. But they still yeah. would come back and play the shows. Yeah, if asked and if you had the money. Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, they, they would... They would consider it. No, they they do it. They they just did yeah. it last week. Yeah, but they wouldn't like you know, put their nose up and laugh at you. No, no, like, no. no. They, they were still. I, I I would still call them like hardcore dudes. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're they're, they're on a different level. Yeah. Making money now, and that's fine. Like yeah. When when I was younger, I'd be like, "Fuck them, sellouts." Blah blah blah. Like now, yeah. like fuck, go get paid. Who cares? And it's funny. They're one of those bands where I'm like, wanted to talk shit on them, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go back and listen to. Under the knife, the split seven inch, and satisfaction. The fucking rule. And I'm like, yeah, under the knife. Like, so let's say this though. fucking see how corny this shit is now. And then you put it on, you're just like, <laughs> never mind. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, it the really fuck, is the blueprint. Yeah, they made the blueprint. They made the blueprint. It really is. Crush the your enemies, dude. Yeah. That song is undeniable to this fucking Smash your enemies. Smash your enemies. Smash your oh. my bad. But still, it's like, God damn, dude. You cannot, like, dun 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 dun. Like, even now in my forties, I'm just like, yeah, what's cool? Like, get and the fact that that up. EP sounds like it was recorded inside your butt, yeah, <laughs> <And it> still, <laughs> still manages to it rips as hard as it does. Yes, exactly. Oh yeah, so, recorded on talkboy. <laughs> <laughs> it was recorded by yeah, a butt. Kevin, Kevin and, McAllister uh, recorded it on his fucking talkboy. Engineered talk by the turds truly. in the butt, <laughs> truly. <laughs> but even all the turds in there were like, yo, this is heavy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to clown, go back and clown it. I remember one of the last times I listened to Satisfaction, I was in a car with Matt. And fucking the fast breakdown of Worlds Apart comes on. That's my favorite song. And we're just like, God damn, this is still fucking That's my rips. favorite Hatebreed song. Because <laughs> remember, we uh, bam, 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 ba, da, everybody da, was da, puffing da, up this da, one da. record that they had just put out. It was the one with that stupid song. I was like, I wish a motherfucker would try. It was really corny as fuck. But we were like, let's listen to the new Hatebreed. Oh, yeah, we definitely give it a shot. That. And we were just fucking laughing our ass <laughs> off at it. And then we are just like, let's see if Satisfaction still holds up. Sure and we're does. we're both just like... Yeah, it does. <laughs> you can't fucking. But one band I wanted to bring up that I used to fucking ride for is two bands actually. First one is Screwdriver. No, <laughs> Brutal but Attack. So now you're doing, you're doing three off. bands in a row, huh? Whitewash. <laughs> Not far off. Blood for Blood. Mm. Okay. I used to fucking be all about Blood for Blood. I know a lot of people who are slash I were lost, slash are. I lost my love for them at the. Uh, 
the outlaw anthem ones with more of the whoa 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 going down the bar songs let's let real quick call back to my the point i made back when people just fucking sweated bands like that mm -hmm. because of yeah. things that they were involved Connections, in. Connections, if you will. Yes. That was the one band I always openly disliked. Me too, and I a, think. And a lot of people that I was friends with were like, how could you say that? They're this, they're that. I'm like, nope. Like, I, I heard a lot. Nothing they're the about new Sheer Terror. I'm like, I, no, Sheer I, Terror I is still Sheer Terror. Oh, you don't like them because you're not from Delco. And I'm like, fine, then I like, fucking hate them then. What does that make? They're not from Delco. I know. <laughs> you know they, they sing about real shit. Like, so? You know, they sing about so Delco. They. That doesn't mean they're good. I, I I have revisited them within the past couple of years. Most of it's not good. I like the very first Spit LP. Your Last Breath. Or Spit I, My Last Breath or whatever. Yeah. That record has some heat on it. Maldito? Maldito. Hmm. That song's fucking... There's, um, there's some riffs. Yeah, there's some cool songs Kinda. on Revenge on Society, but... Uh, I don't the know fucking, about that. Like, but, one note down tune, just fucking ugh. I do love the guitar tone. It's so fucking weird. That's what I don't like about I it. it. I love it. It's so I'll, listen, I'll listen to Ramallah. Oh, yeah. Even the new metal record? The yeah. first Ramallah Which one was that? Hello, Celebrity? No. I, lo I love yeah. that record that EP, a lot. The, uh, I do, too. Let's pump sarin uh, gas into the VMAs. Yeah. It's so corny, the but central for some reason, I can't get over it. Yeah, I don't listen to that one. But Butter Whimper fucking yeah, rules. Butter yeah, Butter Whimper still holds Bam, up. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It was hard. It really fucking was. And you're like, all right, well, maybe the new shit from Blood for Blood will be fucking hard as this. And then it was like, nah. Whoa! You're like, I'm done. The only time I've ever seen Blood for Blood is they, it was later because it was, uh, they were touring with Ramallah. It was Blood yeah. for Blood, Ramallah. I booked, and him, I booked it in Delaware. And it was Undying. <laughs> it was the weirdest show. Yeah. And uh, I just remember, it like, it's like, wait a minute. What the fuck is that playing guitar for Ramallah? Is that Jeff from. Yeah, it's Jeff from, from Coldest Life. From Coldest Life? Yeah. <gasps> Nice. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But uh yeah, I went back and listened to Spit My Last Breath and it was like Larry's three or on four the floor. Songs hold Absolute up. Mad Man. Three or four songs hold up. Other than that. Maldito's no. a gnarly song. Oh, uh, it really is. But and this is also not counting how the people ended up being later in life. Well. Yeah. I feel like I never saw Blood for Blood. Play. Play. Yeah, you did. No, oh, no, wait, no. play play a full set. Oh, like yeah, I feel like yeah, they yeah. always played because we've played talked about that one. A show. couple songs yeah. or like they, I've never I had never seen them play a, like it. The a shows are ultra violent. I did though. once in this fucking uh, theater out in Pennsylvania. It was them and the Ducky Boys and Death Threat. That sounds pretty. And cool. it was just Nazi Central. Yeah, I was about to say was that, that probably same, brought out a crowd. It was a huge venue too. Was it was that in Sellersville? Yes. Did, was that the Sellers same place? Ver Sellersville VFW. Was that the same place I played It Took You With Me? Yes. When I was in 25? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And because uh, the opening band, we were all excited because uh, this is when we all had our own crew. A Strike Back was the opener. Oh, Jesus. And we were like, we got to go fucking. Hello Air? No. After that. <laughs> it was like, we got to go represent. We were like, oh, you, had to go, you had to go represent, dude. I don't think people represent anymore. And that's the sad fact yeah, of the world. But we ended up going to watch, you know, Strike Back. And we were all fucking stoked for our boys. And then the rest, as soon as like they were done playing, more people started rolling in, and it was just like bomber jacket, bomber jacket, bomber jacket. Oh fuck! We end, I ended up, I think, leaving bef before the Ducky Boys even started. I watched Death Threat and left. It's too many skinheads, too many Nazis. I was like, I'm out. And another band. This isn't a hardcore band, but uh, Man of War. <laughs> I used to like. I was like, oh, they're so fucking like metal that they have these lyrics, and it's so cool and hilarious. And everybody in this area was like. Man of War was like everybody used to do this at shows and shit, and now I'm just like, what the fuck was I thinking? It's yeah. just dog shit. It's butthole metal. <laughs> butthole yeah. metal. Yeah, the lyrics are like silly, but I don't want silly out they're, of my music they're anymore. They're silly, but they're very serious to them. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It, they're not doing it to be ironic, like campy, or, yeah, or ironic, mm -hmm. or like even like as a gimmick. They're like, no, we really believe all of this, <laughs> like three inches of blood. Mm. Like Ugh. how they're like campy, like but I don't, I don't mm, take them nah. shit. Like yeah, they're too. I will say metal. this though: I am morbidly curious to s physically watch Man of War play now, just because <laughs> they they because their their last guitar player yeah. went to prison for kid diddling. Yes, their new guitar player is Ingve Malmsteen. Or no, no, I'm sorry, Michelangelo Badia. No he's, shit, I don't know who that yeah, is Michelangelo Badia. I know Yingwei. I don't know the other guy. Uh, he's the guy that Same played thing. like the. 
Okay. Like five neck guitars and shit, and like he was so in the band. You only nitro. got two hands, you silly goose. <laughs> you played them all. <laughs> while while we're in this ballpark, um, am I condemning myself by saying I think Iron Maiden's fucking stupid? I never liked Iron Maiden or Judas Priest. I like both those bands. I do too. I don't like them at all. They don't but, again. But they don't. I'm a priest me truther. If they're on priest rules, but I like whenever I hear them, I'm like, this is way too fucking silly. What? The reason I never got into, I didn't get into metal till late, like the, like the early 2000s, is because the imagery was always so fucking silly and corny to me. And Judas Priest and Iron Maiden were part of that. Mm. And I just was like, all right, it's but just you a can bunch of wankery. you could relate to crime ridden society? What? <laughs> <laughs> I was, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. So here's the thing, though. Like, yeah, have you seen what those guys have been up to lately? <laughs> fucking killed them. No, I'm just saying, the fucking... Just like the musical, I'm like, is this is guitar? Yeah, but that's great. nothing you would ever like. Even now, like, even if you were like, you know what, I'm gonna honestly give it another chance. There's zero percent chance yeah. you would ever like that. It's just no. There's also just, not an ounce of musician in you, so there, there's you. no way I, you I, could I, yeah. like Thank you, Thomas. I really Thank do you. like both Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, but there is a big. You, you gotta, know. You gotta, you gotta. Well, yeah, it's it's silly. You there's also a know big me. but there. Yes. Yeah. It's silly, but the thing is, is it's it's the classic metal, like. Like the, and uh, like, I'm not saying you gotta like it because of that. I'm saying I like. I it. respect it. I like it because yeah, I'm it's not, early I'm, metal. I'll go yeah. to bat for screaming for vengeance any day of the yeah, week. It's, it's, it's an undeniably it's a great like, record. I, I respect it. Yeah, that's that's a good way. But of putting I don't it. listen to I it. I respect it. But when I no, hear you don't it, have to like it. I, I yeah. don't. Yeah, you're not yeah. gonna put it on. I get it. Yeah, yeah, but I'm I'm with you on Iron Maiden. And, would you say Iron Maiden or did you say Judas Priest? He said I, I say see, and that's another thing. Like as as parallel as you can put Judas Priest with them, they never like irked me yeah. the way Iron Maiden did. Yeah, it's totally. just like I it's just then again, all like that new wave of British heavy metal. None of it really did anything for me musically. I was like, most of it's just really silly, and I'm good. You're not a big Scorpions guy? No. <laughs> yeah. no. That dude whistling that long was pretty sick. And they yeah. did bring out the Berlin Wall. So that's that pretty That whistling admirable. song? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember, what's that shitty band that Shady Dom was in? Uh, Slumlords covered Winds of Change. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> of course uh, they did. It was, they had, it was the singer from uh, Breakdown. Breakdown. Yeah, Jeff Brown. And he was doing the whistling part, but he kept running out of breath. breath like, he was like, it was like. <laughs> 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 and you're just like. All right, that's pretty fucking funny. Hell yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Their set at uh, Posse Numbers was fucking yeah. so, so good. So good. <laughs> Scorpions? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Scorpions. Yes. 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 Slum they came over with their, uh, Posse numbers. I was with like, their bumblebee colored the guitars. And we're just <laughs> <laughs> so that, that in charges set, I played football, which a lot of people were like, dude, people <laughs> played football. I was like, yeah, dude, Lion, me. Lion of Judas set that year yeah, was, was fucking awesome. Played bonkers. footy. How many bands are we at? Because it was one, in that one, indoor sports three? dome that year. I'm sorry, I'm a talker. Uh, well, I did H2O too, so I kid that. I, so I, I, got I agreed with technically H2O. two. Are yeah. they on your list? I think too? H2O counted for everybody. Well, can yeah, I do yeah. one now? Then no, let it rip, you, Tommy. Tom. Big this, one. A big one for me is No Warning. Really? I'm with you. I'm out. I'm, with you. I'm, I'm out on that. Dennis, one. Dennis, Dennis used to like No Warning, and I know he doesn't anymore. I would. I would go to war for No Warning when I first started coming around. Yep. And like, and it got me into like, oh, riffs can be really sick in what hardcore. What was the, the first full length? Salt Ill Blood. Ill Blood was Ill the Blood first was the full length. length. Yeah, yeah. This is the first one before that was an uh, EP. The, yeah, the, the Ill, Ill Blood was the one I would go to bat for back Absolutely. in the day. Absolutely, fucking Lily. But now, yes. I, I, I like I like, that record still fucking bangs. It has, I don't it has care. I like it. It has tracks, but I'm not gonna yeah. fucking die As on that whole, hill. No. Yeah. Even I'm not gonna buy a no There's warning shirt. Suffer survival. Like, Suffer survive is good. <laughs> a lot of people say that. People have said. Yes, I will say it's good. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's there. great. I'm not gonna say it's <laughs> terrible. I'm gonna say it's good. It's a record. There's that. <laughs> it came out. It has songs. They're, they're from Canada. <laughs> that's kind of like one Just of the... Toronto, facts. Ontario, Canada. Honestly, that's kind of some of the reason I give no warning a bit of leeway is the fact I'm like, you're kind of like, well, they are Canadian. That's always been like diet America. No, I always like the idea that it was like nerdy white kids a soap from opera Canada <laughs> that like played heavy. I, I, like, I thought favorite. that was awesome. Yeah. They they played one of those like all day long shows that Robbie put on at the Rotunda. Yeah, it was the yeah. Rotunda. 
it, like American Nightmare. Wasn't the Equal Vision Showcase? No. No. It was American Nightmare, and I think the Nerve Agents were like, the, or Killer Rhymes, I, I love the Nerve Agents. Nerve yeah. Agents are so fucking good. Um, it was that summer, though. It was like summer 01, where like Robbie had AN come down to the Rotunda like once or twice. Weekly. <laughs> um, like, no, like once or twice, like a month. Yeah. And one of the headlining bills was Sorry, them and Nerve weekly. Agents, and the other one was them and Kill Your Idols. I think it was the Kill Your Idols day. And it was like an all day thing. And I would go to that right Is now. Is that when George jumped off the. Uh, no, that was, was Equal that Vision. Sh- yeah, oh, that was, was Equal Vision Fest. Yeah. But uh, No Warning was the first band. I remember Panic was like the opening band. Yeah. Because they had like just become a band. Yeah. And No Warning was like setting up on stage. And like their lead singer, Ben, is like this little tiny white kid Canuck. yeah and i'm just like oh, yeah, i'm sure this guy's real With angry a fucking bucket yeah. hat probably like, like let's see what this guy's got to say and then they plugged in and played and i'm like holy oh, fuck. Shit. like did this you man- know he was on goosebumps yeah really yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was a like child more yeah. yeah that's but, cool uh, <laughs> one thing i also will give always give to no warning is i've seen them numerous times right they've never played a, a less than stellar set mm-hmm. that's also true the f- they were tight as hell they had like I know this is a corny thing to give them flowers for, but they always had good gear so you could hear everything. Makes and, yeah, a difference. They were like they're a fucking. They're like a well-oiled goddamn machine. The f- the only like, time I only for the definitely the first time I saw them was when they first came back and played that show in North Jersey. Yeah. Oh, game changer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. they they open with that uh that da 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 da. That's what yeah. they always. That's the like, riff they always open. I was with. like, yeah, holy. Even if they don't play that whole shit. song, that's the riff they always like, open with. Other bands from that era with that same ilk, like American Nightmare. I've seen American Nightmare play some terrible sets. They've never played a good set. They've and, never. They've never <laughs> been tight. They've they, never. And back to Game like, Changer World, real quick. They were mm-hmm. they were rescued during their heyday by the crowd reaction. Yes. Because an yes. entire stage was yep. filled with people piling their on and never. screaming along all the words. Yeah. So they sounded way more He's huge. Never, than, we're talking about this with No Justice he, he a couple days say. ago. Yeah. Like he yeah. doesn't yeah. say. He's like, ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Pretty but, much the same thing Jacob Bannon was doing at that time, too. Yeah. 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 Game Changer, notoriously horrible sounding venue. They sounded unbelievable that day. Yeah. They probably brought their own sound guy. I bet they did. Yeah. Usually when a one band sounds way better than the rest, yeah. it's a different it's sound It's funny. Guy. People used to give them shit like, no one should ever beat a bunch of rich kids from Canada. But it's like, if they use that richness to you know get quality gear to sound good at their shows, I'm like... All right, I'm, I'm not fine with that. I'm yeah. not saying dysphoria were rich kids because those dudes came to work, came to shows with their work clothes on. Yeah, they, they, they brought all their shit themselves. But they always had like full stacks with high they end gear. They were the gear. first band. They I always ever, sounded a billion times better than ever. The first band I ever saw that had a full cabinet. Yeah, I'm sure you know this by now, but most hardcore bands were suburban kids. Yeah, yeah. who yeah, had yeah, yeah. had a little bit of money. So, but they would always try to like put off that they weren't by having like shitty gear and shit like that. Oh like, well, yeah. Take if you got the money, get the good gear. Yeah, Sounds they, good. They also lie by omission, though. Yeah, but no warning. I, I do like Ben Cook from No Warning. His his like persona changes depending on what band he's in. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever listened to oh, he is an like, Fucked Up or Young Governor. Dude, the Marvelous Starling stuff is so fucking. I, good. I love Marvelous fucked Starling. Up. I love oh, yeah. fucked so up. fucking. I don't even good. know what the fuck that is. Fucked up. No, Marvel is Darling is or whatever. It's like it's a, a pa- it's like a garage power yeah. pop band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucked yeah, yeah. up is a band Fuck I never, awesome. it never, I never, yeah, messed I never, with. I'm never, I've never, I've never, I've never heard a second of their music. They were annoying as shit by. Like, hey, we're putting out an eight track. Like, oh, fuck off. I, uh, I, I mean, Hidden World is a pretty undeniable it's record. F- I just denied incredible it. Incredible record. Ooh, Not and like snap. this goes. This goes back to me snap. saying that like most hardcore yeah. bands should sh- stick to EPs because they. It's they just, they release an yeah. LP and it's like an EP's worth of bangers of bangers and then there's like yeah. five or six filler tracks. Then there's tracks two and four, then there's bands. seven. They write street rock songs and then they put violins and, on it and, and people are like, "Yo, this is no, no, no." And I'm not, I'm not it's even, like, it's and I'm not, not even really. like trying to be on that kind of time with with how, with with them. It's just like that re- that lone record is yeah. fucking the first three songs insane. like just boom 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 are so good. Also, they used to have like straight up hardcore songs that were like six minutes long. Like, mm. stop. They also have like fifteen records now. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. That's He's a great issue. podcast host. He's his should. podcast is good. His podcast is great. I don't know about. I don't even know his name. Turned out a punk, I think. Yeah. Oh, that is oh, a great I show. Heard great. I've heard Dude, of that. Mikey Pipple. Did you listen to that? Uh, I haven't listened, uh, I haven't listened so in a good. while. He has Mikey from Pipple on talking. Okay, that's an undeniably Fucking good show. Solid. I gotta say. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't even know who Pipple is. 
from Detroit? He's from yeah, Puerto Rico. Yeah, band from Detroit that What's going was on my radar? really fucking good. He, yeah. I thought he wrote that song about Meet Me at Remember that the band Hotel. Coalition? Forget yeah. about your boy. <laughs> they used to do Pitbull <laughs> right? when, yeah, yeah, when they played, yeah. 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 Mr. Yeah, Worldwide totally yeah. all the time. So that's probably yeah. Real pussy getter. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. And favorite. then which we called did too. Uh, jailbreak would do him too. That's right. Yeah. Why am I? Am I thinking of Jailbreak? I think it's Jailbreak <laughs> that did it. I okay. definitely saw Jailbreak do a Pitbull cover because Janice got on stage and sang. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I see. Yeah, because Jailbreak played that right uh, yeah, exactly. that mental show I that, I, that I was referring to. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a great thing that happened at that show that. I'm friends with the person now, okay. but when it happened, like I laughed super fucking hard. I'm not gonna. Let's, Somebody got sucker punched, and I laughed really well, hard. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about it after. <laughs> let's start after, a, we, after we cut cameras. Yeah. Let's talk about. Let's that. start a cycle of another couple bands. Then I'll I'll start so we can get the rotation back in order. Okay. Uh, a big one that I would die on the hill for was Backtrack. Back in the day, I don't know that I've ever heard that. Band. So yeah, that that's a band that they were came like and went. When I wasn't paying attention. Sure, because they were an inescapably big band. I know they were huge. From 2008 to 2000, until they broke up in 2017. Isn't that the guy that went on and did uh, sang for Outburst for a second? I don't know that to be sh- for sure. but When they were doing the Outburst stuff, I think he was saying. But their demo, their demo was 2008, and their first 7-inch Deal with the Devil was a 2010. So it's like the demo is like right when I first really jumped into hardcore, yeah, and, I, and the demo was fucking crazy good. I, I remember, yeah, I remember when they first broke out. Me being like, okay, this is cool. They put on great shows, and yeah, they never disappointed me when I saw them live. They're a great draw. I don't think I ever saw them I I outside of like work. a fest. Yeah, I feel. Like I've never like thing. voluntarily gone to see them play a smaller show. I don't know that I ever did either, but I I listened to them a lot. But later, they were they were they continued being a band. They put out multiple LPs that I was just like, I they just fucking fell off. Did they fall off, or did you just like not for, care for, anymore? They fell off for me. For me, yeah. I did not give a fuck ever I don't feel again. Like they ever sacrificed quality. I no, just no. I just feel like again when you flood the market. Value goes down. They they never got any so smaller. They when they what, like you said they would put out like an LP a year. I feel like they put out like three LPs. I yeah, think. and I'm just like I don't need all this content. Uh, no, I'm good. Who are we talking about? Backtrack. Backtrack. Uh, never See a lot a lot of people share that sentiment, but I just like I I know I've seen them and it just. That first EP with like the black and white artwork on it. Yeah, deal with the devil. Deal with the devil is that what it was called? I remember liking that EP a lot. The demo is unbelievable. It's much better than this is. This is back when like you still had your 160 gig iPod Mm -hmm. before you streamed music. And I remember a buddy of mine put that. Okay, Dennis, right now. (laughs) (laughs) They they keeps it real. I have an iPod Touch now. A buddy of mine put that EP (laughs) on my iPod, being like, "You'll like this." And I remember listening to it. There was like a whole summer that I just like jammed that EP and really liked it. It's, and nothing it's, they put out after that, like hit that. I'm not sitting on the floor. Hit that high point for me. I think it was of the time uh, thing because I think, was Elliot? I was young, and it is paint by numbers New York hardcore, really. Yeah. But I thought like I think I still think it's really well done. Yeah, it wasn't like flat cap oi oi oi. Yeah. Sprinkled it's in. It's well done, but it's nothing exciting exactly to me they were they, i mean this this might sound stupid but in they were like you're a good boy in my head there was always new york hardcore and then there was long island hardcore they yes. they, they were long island to me yes. they bridged the gap though okay because like they're not pe- you did people would call them undeniably like Got new em. york hardcore yeah they, no, i mean they, i get that it's just like they were always like that on the fringe of that to me they started one of the best tours like tour package like things that came around every year in hardcore too which was the life the life and death tour i remember that yeah they, i thought that was terrorist thing they were mm-mm. it was vitalo from backtrack that guy's a dick he's booked every band like that i that i've ever person. known really but like that tour was awesome yeah but that's this is why that's i love a, being so far removed from Hardcore scene politics. Like I don't, I don't know him. I can never I can met him. Don't to care. Like and dislike bands just based on how they sound. I'd never met him. Don't care too. I don't, yeah. ca- I don't give a shit. But Backtrack was a, was a a huge early band for me. Now, did can anybody say when it's not only not it's not just a band that doesn't hold up, but an entire label that you used to fucking be all about, and then looking back, you're just like, ew, 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 ew. Rock that's still Obama, good. Probably. 
Isn't that a... <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. punk o I don't know. Panzerfaust? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... Great comic, Peter Panzerfaust. Did you, I watch, was, did you read that? It was no, a good one. You did, you did awesome. that bit where if you could take the stink off of one band's I and put it on another. another. Yeah, Didn't yeah, yeah. Janice say like Rockarama is like a whole label he yes. would do that to? I think he did. Yeah. Because they put out legit shit for their first a like, period of time. Well, yeah. Five or six years as the label. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then they, they pivoted. They pivoted to yeah. some not so but uh unsavory. Good, yeah. One label I used to fucking be all about in the late nineties, early aughts was Trust Kill. And a lot of the stuff I revisit now, I'm just like no, because what? even back then they had shit on their roster that you're like, ugh. Yeah, that but I would still be like, all those. Still I never... like, what I mean by when I would ride for this label is like, if I went to the, because this is still when I, you yeah, would at least give it a chance. If I went to yeah, a record, yeah, if yeah, I went yeah. to the CD store, and you know, I was like, I saw something that had Truskill on it, I would pick it up if I hadn't heard of them or of them, I would give it a shot just because of the label. I've I, never been a label nerd. I well, can't oh, say I, I paid you attention. You grew up in the internet era, though, where yeah, you could check it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's you, a could, you could vet things you could way check easier things out than we yeah. could going to the record store. We well, couldn't do that. I, I kind of grew up in both, though, because like a band would get signed to say like they start on Reaper and then they get signed to something bigger. Yeah. They, they have like the Reaper R on their shirt. Like, oh, they're like legit now. Well, it's, the, same, it's the same thing. Well, as, the thing as is, with, like with Trustkill is like there was no. Back then, there was no things like you would go from Reaper to this label to this label. Like Bridge you Nine, went, whatever. You went from having a, a, a demo. demo, CDR, or tape to being on Trustkill. Mm. So there was no gateway It was label. a big jump. Yes. It was the same and, with Victory. and Yeah. And sure, like Relapse, Trustkill, I would or, find some really shitty rock records because Death of it. Death Wish, whatever. But like, I remember uh, having Poison the Well records. And shit like that. Uh, and now I'm, I'm just like, oh. I'm think I'm actually thinking of a band on my list right now that was a Death Wish band. But the la- the, skill, though. the label thing's like another episode, I think. I remember finding um that Harvest <laughs> record hey. in a dollar bin. Yeah. Me too. At a at a record store. <laughs> Which one though? And being uh it was yes. like it was everything. <laughs> the orange one. The, they had well, like they had two. It they was like their whole discovery. Living with a God complex and Yeah, and not that one. The other it was, one. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. one with Epicure on it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Wait, Epicure is the only good song on that record. This song sucks. It stinks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, this is coming from somebody who used to love Harvest. Yeah, so same. I don't like Harvest. Well, the thing that I remember seeing the album artwork, I'm like, this looks like a hardcore mm-hmm. album. And then yeah, seeing yeah, yeah. the Trustkill logo on yeah. the back was like the deal breaker. Yeah, I'm like, right, yeah, oh, this is it. definitely a yeah. hardcore band or a metalcore band, whatever you want to call it. And I remember, you know, being, what, 18 yeah, at same. the oldest, like being like, this record fucking rips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there was maybe about three or four al- albums that came out on that label that I will still listen to to this day. And it's just like torn apart and stuff like that. But yeah, Harvest does did, didn't hold up at all. Well, let, let me they get, tried to come back too. They let me get to another band. They played so this I can... hardcore. And I remember I was there with Matt. And even though we were excited to see them, we were both kind of like doing that we're bored now foot shuffle. We were just kind of like... Right? Who are we talking about? Left. Harvest. Harvest. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, let me, let me get to another band so we can get this episode back on track now. We're still talking about the same thing, right? Well, you started on the and label I discussion. Will. Not really. The label is yeah, where man. all the bands are. I'm talking You're like the... Fan. Yeah, that was, that like, was the one. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking like the Trust Kill roster of bands, so it's numerous bands. Well, I got a band. What do you got? E-Town Concrete? No, they still rule. Yeah, no, they don't. Some. <laughs> no. Bane. Never. Ooh, Bane stinks always. Never. There's was, there's one that was f- tried to be fucking sold to me my whole hardcore yep. life. I love and I was Bane. always like, nope. No. I was For, never the on. first EP and the first full length, I love. Holding this moment was so I love fucking the, the, good. It, it doesn't hold no. up. So my, my original point that I made when we first started talking about this, they were one of those bands. Everyone, friends, mm-hmm. acquaintances, mm-hmm. people I had just mm-hmm. met. Like stand this band I, so fucking hard, and I'm I, like, mm-hmm. what am I missing? I'd say ten percent. I like of, so many bands that sound very similar to this. Yes, something about this band did not fucking stick for vocals. me. Mm. Yeah, Everything I, wasn't always the vocals that like I, I, I still me. like, but like I just it just didn't hold up for me. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'd say I'd like, like I don't put it. Mind you, mind. I yeah. would see them live mm-hmm. because this was around the time where the EVR showcase was I like them and converge with headline yeah, and like yeah, yeah. i would see the crowd reaction i would understand that the live set was cool 
but Live, something they are, they are fun to watch. Something yeah. just didn't mm-hmm. stick. Why I was band. never got it. Like I never could like figure out like what everybody was seeing that I wasn't seeing with that. But uh, our guy, most of us know John Hassan. He see he sealed the deal for me by saying, you know, I sat down and listened to that Bane record until I liked it. <laughs> and I was like, if you have to do that for a record, you have to browbeat it, yourself. A, yes, a yes actually, center, that, mean, that <laughs> means it's not a good fucking record. Yeah. And it, honestly, as much as a crazy person as he is, I always respected his taste. That's, and that's very different from a yeah. uh, from a band or a record that grows on you, like yeah. organically. Like I've I've had bands organically start to like mm-hmm. gel in my head as like I rediscovered them or listened to them like in a different setting or saw yeah. them live or you know something something hit the switch that made me realize like oh this band is has something going on. Bane never like fully turned that switch for me. It was always- I'm, not, I'm not saying that like hindsight 2020 thing where like I'm trying to be like oh I was cool this whole time like I never liked that band. Like they were that band that was always around. I I bought their records. I went to go see them. Something about them just never clicked. I was they yeah. were never in like my top tier of like bands that I thought deserved that amount of adoration. I did you, well, here's the thing. Did I really used to like them, or did I just fall in line because you're supposed to like them? Yeah, exactly. That was, that's so, what I, that's kind know. of what I'm torn on. That's how I feel about a lot of the bands I brought. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. that's what I'm torn on. Like that's ex- that's exactly what they did. Yeah, because when you were young, you felt like you had to like them because well, they were the biggest band. On the if you were a hardcore before, kid, you had hardcore. to like Band X or whoever you know, and then you're like, then you realize you know you're your own person. You're gonna be like, no, this is not good. They're always just cookie cutter and formulaic to me. I thought they. I don't had think their they sounded going. like anybody. I definitely, I think they definitely had those. I thought they had their own vibe, yeah. but like it just wasn't for me. Yeah, yeah the same. Vibe was I did not like it. Generic and yeah. yeah. I remember being legit upset because the one dude quit Converge to do that band. They kicked him out. I was like, why would you quit that to do he this? Did. He did. I pushed my glasses I'm up my sure nose. They kicked them out of. Converge. I don't know. I don't even care at this point. But Converge still rules. Fuck yeah, yeah. it does. I actually enjoy them even more. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a band I probably like even more now yeah. than I did. Who's right. your next band, Larry? So I did too. Okay, uh, I would say the next one for me is I would say it's because it was local, and that was I Hate You. Like I listen to I Hate You now, and I'm like, this isn't good. Mm. Like there's nothing. No. Were like, they ever good though? I don't. Know. I think the it was song just the cram- time and place. The song Cram still hits. Cram right? is fun. Everything else, no. I, I I just am like you know the drummer. I'm still friendly with like Brandon. Yeah. yeah. Like does he still wear a white shirt and a tie? No. All the time. Yeah. Every okay, day. Cool. If you were, if you were around um, for that, Witness. yeah. But like it now, was, I listen to it. and I'm like that when the disc. Remember when the discography was going to come out? The prime and, directive. And like all that, like everything around it, and then like, but now I listen to it. I'm like. And I saw them at that Nick Rotunda benefit they played. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I saw whatever. the video of that and it looked boring. I was just mm-hmm. like, yeah. Except when Timmy New Justice got up yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. stage dove in the brain and drum set. <laughs> like, that was. But, like, they're a band that, like, I listen to now and I'm like, no. Uh-uh. I think I only ever really cared about Cram, honestly. Yeah. You know what I loved about I, uh, I, I Hate You was the fucking. They're one of the first bands of that ilk. That did the tight snare sound. You know okay. what I mean? Because you know how like all like the wigger bands had already had the super tight snare, the poppy snare. The youth crew bands didn't really do that. And but I hate you would have like the bat. You're like, yeah. Well, I've got the, now I've got the fast drugs. part of cram stuck in my head. We have more friends in you. Yeah. That song still fucking rules, but I heard it covered many times. It's just yeah. And I also think a bunch of the like the imitators water it down for you too. Uh, maybe yeah i don't i just I, like the whole like because i love tyler but that fake i hate you he had was just like come on dude but like the whole like we're in your face and we're gonna yeah. like say like it, it's like the whole <laughs> i don't know just like you know we're we're straight edge and we're militant it's like yeah. you're not this is an act yeah like it's Dressed not like Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, yeah. like I, I don't like the singer was you know Krishna conscious. Like yeah, it, it's just a lot of like now. So looking, he definitely didn't believe what he was saying. No. Yeah. <laughs> like, so like looking back on it, I'm like, ugh. It's but fun. at the time I was like, this is the greatest fucking thing oh, ever. Oh, when you're young, like the extremes are what. Yes. Yeah. 
gimmicks like that are selling points when you're that young and yeah. when that time period was happening and again the market wasn't flooded with bands trying mm. to do shit like that yes we're trying to push the envelope in yes. any direction i will say real quick that they had a band shortly after i hate you called Lindsay's eyes and they were kind of going for the whole we and piss everybody off too the bass player or the bass player for stabs at joy was the singer of Lindsay's eyes they did this thing at girls inc <laughs> at girls inc in newark yep uh at a show story. they had it was a show with a bunch of like uh emo bands that were like vegan emo bands and shit their merch table was cuts of pork and beef on wax paper <laughs> and their merch guy was dressed in a giant pork chop mm -hmm. costume <laughs> Jesus and yep they got what it asked for because people were like you know huge gauges in their ears and like metal bead necklaces were coming up it's like why would you even do this do you think this is funny do they do and the dude just dressed as pork chop is just like yeah that that beats out porter in a fur coat yeah <laughs> to stage dive into earth crisis now that was fun <laughs> sean mccabe did that didn't he I thought it was Porter. I thought it was Sean McCabe. It, it seems to me that it was a McCabe that's story, too. That segues into uh, hate, my next band. I hate Ink and Dagger. But if you say Floor Punch, I'm going to be really upset. No. no but Inc, I'm going to say Ink and Dagger. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, are you about to say Floor Punch? But, yeah, fuck, so I'm going to be like, really no. upset if you say Floor Punch. I got, but Ink and Dagger, the thing that I did that made me, one thing I did like about that band was the fur coat thing, and I think he threw yogurt, yogurt. at Earth Crisis. I knew, the yo I, I knew McCabe was the yogurt guy. I didn't yeah. know he was the I thought Porter was the fur coat. I think both of them was in the same fucking uh, instance. I thought he had a fur coat and was throwing yogurt at them. Could be. All right. Porter was more of like a meathead. Like, we'll punch yeah, somebody I, in the face. Yeah, but I thought he was the one that what did that. What, he beat up the singer of By the Grace of God? He was the dude that would fucking uh, smoke cigars and still say he's straight edge. I don't think he did that one. No, that's a one life that's crew. One life crew. That's one life crew. Mike Judge too. I don't. I don't think Porter did that one. <clears throat> um, can I? Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. So yeah, I just kind of gave away my next answer. Uh, a band that I <laughs> never, ever, ever jumped on board with. Mm -hmm. Never thought was good. Never thought their gimmick was cool. No matter how many times it was tried mm -hmm. to, someone tried to force fucking feed it to me. Mm -hmm. No matter how many times I was like shamed into like attempting to like them yeah ink and fucking dagger i thought this was about uh bands you used to ride for though so again one of these bands oh you're falling in line or i it was one of those things where like i kept my mouth shut gotcha. because they yeah. made so many other people around me so happy I'm just like, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be the edgelord that's like, and all it takes fucking stupid. All it takes for evil to persevere is for good men to do nothing. <laughs> so again, this is one of those bands where like the, like you mentioned John Hassan, like I tried <laughs> to like force myself to like them. It just never happened. I used to do shit like that too. Yeah. Like I would force listen to this shit and just be like, why, why do people think this is even remotely appealing? Yeah. I like it. Me too. Music and, I, and like I understand, like I respect like, I get all it. my friends who do, but I don't get it. Oh, I me mean, I, I do, but I just, it's not for me. Like it's like that scram screamo shit. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you're a vampire. Like, oh, you fucking, you're dark and mysterious. Like, no, you're not. You're a junkie. You're just like, <laughs> stop it. That's one <laughs> thing. Oh, like, com like coming up, like Ink and Dagger was pushed on me a little bit because of like the dark hardcore and shit I was getting mm -hmm. into, but. All I ever heard about McCabe was that he was a fucking piece of shit to oh, yeah. everybody. Always. Like, would steal shit from now, people all the time. I don't remember 100%, but I've been to several shows where and Dagger was there because they were always somehow managed to be part of a tour package of bands I really wanted to see. It just happened that way. They played with Dillinger Escape Plan a lot. Mm -hmm. Dude, at, at Brookside Community they Center, must have been one of the best sites was Dillinger there, but... Ink and Dagger found their way to get on that show. I think they ended up bailing last minute. Were yeah, that's another thing they did a lot. Yeah. They were on an initial yeah, show. But um, I, I just, yeah, I didn't get, like, musically it was Body fine. I thought about that. Vocally, no. I was just like, no. no. Mu I, I didn't vibe with them musically either. The, I thought it sounded like. I said it was fine. I didn't say it was good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, 
I could take a fucking electric guitar and plug it in and like throw it down a flight yeah. of stairs too and record it and say like, yeah, check out my spooky riffs. Hell yeah. And like, every time, no. <laughs> hell no. You, I'd be into that. Did you get this too? Like every time Dudes you will hear to this say, and be like, hell yeah. <laughs> every time you try to say Ink and Dagger wasn't good no, okay. and people would throw their ex bands at you. Motherfucker, I went to art school. <laughs> oh yeah, I had yeah, okay. to deal with Fair a bunch enough. of motherfuckers mm-hmm. who thought they were the fucking Beatles. I yeah. get it. I was it's just like, like, no. How can you say that? This dude used to be in Frail. I'm like, well, Frail sucks too. Like, <laughs> you it's know? great, but yeah, I do love I Tim and Eric. Though throw, <laughs> I could tolerate Frail. When people throw like the past bands at you to help help you like think it's good, it's like, okay, maybe they were cool on that LP, but on this LP, they're hot shit. They stink. They're not good. There's plenty of ex member yeah. bands that I don't ride for. Like that. Yeah. That's not a selling point for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it used to be like that's what Phil's argument was like. Uh, this band's not good. We talk about it. It's ex members of like fucking floor punch. You're like, yeah, it's not an argument. So? Yeah, so it's yeah. an argument, but it's not a good one. <laughs> it doesn't hold any water. Yeah, like, you're I certainly agree. saying words, but it's not like it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> All those words, but that doesn't make any, <laughs> doesn't sense. Make any yeah. sense. So, definitely um, Yahoo Serious Festival no, with this you. conversation. I'll you on Ink and Dagger. How many bands are we at now? Three. Three. Okay. Three. That's probably about all I got. Anyway. Three. I can probably think of a couple more. I got two more. That I, 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 have, I have three more. I have another broad like genre, not necessarily like a set in stone band, but bands of this ilk. Um, and it wasn't even that long ago. Maybe like at the latest, like 10 years ago, I was still thinking like this was acceptable. Like I liked a lot of like weird black metal. Mm-hmm. And we like, talked about this too. Some yep. bands have slipped through the cracks over the years, and like I'll still hear like a recording where I'm like, "This is cool. Like this band's good." But there was a time where like I was taking on all comers. Mm. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> see you, Emmers. <laughs> no, Fill I, me I, up. I, I still do that. <laughs> Break my backside. Don't get it fucking twisted. <laughs> no, I hear um, you. we didn't. <laughs> there was a time, and I mean, we we've talked about this on previous episodes too, where like blogs would just be oh, a yeah. wild west period of you could just download media files, everything, tons. You could yeah. the entire fucking record collections that R- people R- had. R.I.P. Media Fire. Yes, I, I Media Fire was like blogs. my fucking addiction. So I would I would just get like rest in power albums upon albums upon albums upon yeah. albums of like all this weird spooky shit i mm-hmm. never heard before and i just like i just fucking took it all like i was just like i took it all in and i'm like this shit rules and i go back and i try to listen to it now and i'm just like yeah. and you're this like, shit's mm-hmm. fucking stupid the thing is, is it's not that, even bad it's just fucking stupid I yeah. like, everybody in that era OD'd under the same on everything it, this is under the True. ink and dagger umbrella for me where it's like oh you're spooky you're wearing makeup like oh you're 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 saying yeah. like cool shit like so the fuck what write your a band, song your band still <laughs> can't write a cohesive song you have a seven minute song that's two riffs yeah mm. uh, what fucked me up with black metal is like yeah like one out of ten black metal bands i'll listen to and enjoy right but it came to the fact that uh the amount of times you would have to like you have amount of research you have to put if you want a person <laughs> i know where you're going with this that doesn't want to be associated with anything racist homophobic or anything like that you have to do so much research into black metal bands that at the end of the day it just became like it's too much work yeah. to find a new black metal band because i'm not going to yeah. put and in, you're not good enough for me to put in that kind yeah. of work so i gotta i enjoy the a record i heard from you i want to find out more i want to learn more but then once I have like five records and I'm telling everybody how great it is, somebody's like, oh, did you know they're nationalists? You're just like, oh, no. That reminds me and of not, uh, even, not even nationalists, but like yeah. you would just – like I the, the mystique surrounding the band or yeah. band members was the appealing part for me. Not that they might have been Nazis, but yeah. they, that they were just like sketchy people. Like they yeah. were just like into some fucking weird – Grave Robin and shit yeah, like that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, oh. Burying like, their clothes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's – that's obviously not a selling point for me anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit. I'm with you. And, I get it. Like, a, and a lot of the bands, um, like marketing that they did, either for themselves or what maybe just like the urban legend behind them did for them, was another selling point. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, this band's like mysterious. They do weird stuff. Yeah. They're weird. They're like, ooky and they're spooky. Yeah, and yeah. like the <laughs> like the way they would like. I, I was big into like the physical packaging of like records and releases sometimes. So like, um. A band called Have a Nice Life was was a band that um, stuck out to me back then because they did their packaging really different. 
And I go back and I try to listen to that record now, and I'm like, mm-hmm. it's like 20 tracks of just fucking dumb, noisy, weird shit, Trouble. and like one or two actual songs that like kind of sound okay. And then like I discovered they had put out other releases after that, after I like lost interest, and they're all terrible. <laughs> that reminds me of a uh, Dennis. When we went to um, celebrated summer. Mm. <laughs> and Brent was uh, with we, us. We brought this up last episode uh, of Mayfi. Yeah, well then, ahead. never mind. <laughs> you can go ahead and tell it. Well, it's it, a quick we story. There it's and, your uh, turn. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a Patreon saw episode? Saw the shirt and he went over to Half Tony. Ah, uh, okay. yeah, and he he, he was uh, just like, "Hey, uh, you know, it's a sketchy like white power band, right?" Yeah. He's like, "Oh." He went over to this crap, grabbed it, and threw it in the trash can. Yeah. Immediately. I, I gave, I gave uh, Tony his flowers. Because, no hesitation. Yeah. Because it was... A, he, he had just a, didn't know. It he was Inquisition. No Inquisition. Was the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had... It was, it was like a double record, I think, too. It was like a fat... It was like a... I, it was a record? I thought it was a shirt. No, it was a, both. Oh, okay. And I was like, look, man, I, I don't mean to like talk shit on how you run your shit, but did you know that these guys, you know, dot, 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 and gave him like the whole backstory of Inquisition? He's like, Really? And he's like, goes into the, the, the bins. He's like, this one here? I'm like, that one right there. And he's like, oh, yeah, I just got this in. And, a, and, a, and like a shirt, a couple shirts. And he's like, really? That like, I'm like, he didn't even Google it himself to double check me. He just took it out of the fucking bin. Just threw it in the trash. Threw it in the trash. Took the shirts off the rack. Threw them in the trash. And was just like, that sucks. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's, he's a real dude. Cut his losses. Sure. Tony's a real fucking dude. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Going a similar week, story. I'm excited. Yeah, not not that awesome. similar. But a, a guy I know that um, ran a record store said that uh, occasionally like people would come in and ask for very specific releases. <laughs> do you have a back room by any chance? Yeah. So like, hey, like have, the, do you have like behind you have a that, curtain maybe? Do you have that crater? The, double doors. Noise, the noise pollution? Well, uh, <laughs> noise pollution was the store that was always like the you, green light to steal from because they had the, the You crate. would have to ask the they guy. They had the crater records under the desk yeah. that like wasn't cool. Yeah. So we would always be like, yo, steal from that store because like it's okay because that <laughs> dude sucks. <laughs> but no, this was another record store. It wasn't even in Philly. This was a Jersey record store. Um, I won't say the guy's name. I won't say the record store because it's still active. Um, and this this guy wasn't bad. But people would come in and be like, hey, do you have this? Do you have this? Or do you have a secret stash of like this kind of stuff? <laughs> Did they go beforehand? And he would always be like, no, like we don't do that here. Wink, wink. And like one guy would come in specifically and be like, hey, like can you order this for me? Like I know you have distribution. Like can you get this can you get this can you get this and it would always be like these sketchy oi records or these sketchy black metal records and what he'd be like, no he'd be like oi? no like i'm not doing that and then like he would every once in a while like he would ask around like do you know this guy like this guy named such and such comes in all the time and asks for these very specific records that like i'm not down with and it turns out this guy was a cop in that town uh, and he's just like that doesn't surprise cool. me at all like yeah a not oh. surprised like it's one of the like disappointed yeah. but not surprised situations yeah. how bad is it when you're like he was a cop and everybody's like checks out yeah that, the that hour the second and the minute hand all point to the same time <laughs> yeah eh? no one's like <gasps> everybody's like oh yeah that sounds about right yeah. I, I got one more quick band then to, he's got um, two I think uh, I've got, but I want to get it back in order okay. Metallica I would go to fucking war for Metallica when I was younger so what changed I'm sick of them. Like I said before, they are the Walmart of like metal. Like sick of them, like you listen to them too much yourself, or both. I mm. I I Metallica'd myself out. You like, can't you can't put those first couple records in a vacuum. I'd go all the way up to the Black Album and ride ride into the gates of hell for them. I will not listen to the Black Album ever. As out. I do not like it. Oh yeah. I, and I've, I've, it's I've just, said this. I've said this on this podcast before. Think about the first nine seasons of The Simpsons. It's but mm-hmm. they're think so about how corn- much- Get him. Tell him, Elliot. Yeah. Squirrel. Yeah. Why are you so passionate about Metallica, dude? Yeah, he's fucking mad at you for talking shit on <laughs> his yeah, wife. Yeah, but think, yeah. think about how he's like, open his door. Let me Simpsons out of here. have been for the past <laughs> twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't change the fact that the first nine seasons oh. are literally untouchable. Mr. Grubb and, was 11. And those, those seasons can exist in a vacuum for me. Well, Mr. I, said, I said this us. too. There's tracks. There's a lot of riffs too, but I'm fucking so sick of it. So even if you told yourself like Metallica broke up after Injustice for All, you still would be sick of it? <laughs> if only. You would Wrong, be sick of it? Wrong kid died, actually. <laughs> I mean, if if Lars would have died in well, the bus that, I mean, crash the age instead old of Cliff, shit. Like, oh, it and they would have broke Lars. up, yeah, they'd be the most. If if Lars died and Cliff didn't, 
and they broke up after that. I don't think God, they'd be as one. big as they are now. No, but, but they would be yawn. fucking legendary because <laughs> sure, sure, the, sure. those records could stand sure, on their own. Those yeah, records are undeniable. Metallica was one of those bands where I, I never liked them, but I didn't really bug people too much about them until they had, I don't remember what it, what it was for, but they had like, I don't know if it was on TV or a, a video of theirs or whatever, but it was that they had to go to a couple's therapy oh, session. Oh, it's a movie. So that was, yeah, it's a movie. Uh, some kind of monster. Some kind of monster. It's a documentary. Yeah, monster. Couple's Actually, therapy. Dave Mustaine came on and was crying. Yeah, he's yep. crying. To fucking like talk a about. Bitch. I mean, like staying together as a band. To be fair, like, Dave Mustaine was always a bitch. But I'm just saying, but the it's fact like that they didn't go with Scott Reader on bass. Fucking idiot. But it's just <laughs> like, why? Idiots. If you have to have a couples counselor and film it, keep you together, you should just break up. That was too much over 20 years it ago. It was too fucking corny for me. I was like, no, dude. Oh no, it's it's any credibility they had. My eyes is done. Again, I don't need any current credibility. Yeah. To go back and listen to Ride the Lightning and understand that so, that record is as close to as perfect as you can you, get. You said it perfectly about The Simpsons. It can exist in a vacuum. Yeah. Like uh, those first... I can unconditionally love something. Mm. You know, it's... I, I, I go up to the Black Album. I still really like the Black Album, but... What's, we, what, we, what, we all have that one family member that we that we remember when we were album. kids. What were the songs? Sad But True, Enter Sandman. Enter Sandman. Unforgiven. I like the Black Album. Okay, I'm not a I'm not it's a super I'm not heavy. a Black Album. The one song I like was a song called uh, still at prom. "Of Wolf and Man." That's a good song. The one song <laughs> I like by them is that song "Black," and I don't remember what album it's on. Justice. 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 Okay. Black Album is one of those albums where, like, you it's a good record, but you can be like, okay, I can I can fully understand why oh, they yeah. why it, they pivoted to where they pivoted it could, from it could here. Be a different band, honestly. Yeah. What was the album? It's not a thrash. I mean, there's some thrash songs. What but. was the album of theirs that everybody gave them shit for? Load, load. Where because like um, the Lou Reed one, Lars' uh, drum sound sounded like trash cans and that's shit. That's Saint Anger. Oh, that's Saint Anger. Yeah, Stanger. Because like he like. <laughs> Changed the way like all the he, he drum just sounds. Didn't, he didn't put the snare on, like you know the the wires in the bottom of the yeah, yeah. drum. He just left them off, and Don't, it just is like. Bong, 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 God bong. knows yeah. why he did that. Yeah, that's that. He just fucking rocked with it. He's probably thinking about tennis. <laughs> yeah, true. He is Dutch. But, and like I, I like I like a tight sounding snare. That sounds like shit on a heavy record, but yeah. that doesn't even sound like a snare. It no. sounds it's like a timbale. It's, yeah, it, it, it sounds like a roto. No, it, it sounds, sounds like, like a trash can. Snare. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Fuck yeah! He just fucking bodied one of the greatest rock drummers of all time. Larry nothing nothing but fucking net, Larry. <laughs> There's a whole different discussion about that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I understand. I, still, I think I still think it's. I, this is why I'll give Lars Ulrich nothing. He, no, dude, no. He, I love that his dad talks shit about him. <laughs> I love the fact that <laughs> he is like the Euros business. Are brutal, dude. He is the business end of that band. That's what like, I'm saying. Mm-hmm. He's he, the guy who runs that band. Like those mm-hmm. behind other guys in the bands, like from back, like the older members, the guys who've been in like since Jump, were always like, "Yeah, that was that." But you know, he was the one that had a car. His dad paid for yeah, this. He's rich. His dad like, was rich. So they out now said he was in the band because his dad paid for all their shit. Yeah, there's always that James Hep- when he's like Lars isn't even the best drummer in Metallica. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good yes, interview. Yes. Like, like, would you say Lars is the best drummer in the world? He's not even the best drummer in Metallica. Yeah, and like That's so good. And, it, and Lars like Sick when we, like burn. confronted with that shit was kind of like. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> he's kind of like, so, so what? What are you gonna do? I, I can't, and I can't and take, who sits on the throne? He's like, who's got the money? Me. I can't, and meanwhile, I he's doing me. some kind of monster. He's got an actual Picasso. Yeah. hanging on the wall yeah. behind his couch. So he moneyed his way into the biggest metal band of all time and stayed there. Mm-hmm. I give him credit for that. That's I, I can't take credit, credit for for this quote selling. because Jordan yeah, said yeah, yeah, it on our first episode with you guys. If Mars <laughs> were like a super technical drummer that like did fills and like just like basically oh, masturbated yeah, his drum set yeah. in their songs, would those riffs stand out as no. good as they do? No, no. no. So Absolutely he kind not. of does a service to the no. overall sound of the band. He's he's done, the I don't think so, man. Yeah, yeah, by, by, I'm not buying like, that you just anymore. Let those riffs breathe a little bit more than than they would if like you had like <laughs> Pete Sandoval drumming for you. I'm, yeah. I'm not buying that anymore because a really good drummer knows to do that. Lars he's couldn't not, do it. He's yeah. not a really good drummer. Exactly. What's, well, what's the difference then? If you don't know, like. You don't know well, what you don't know is another... But it is also a, like a nice upper, middle ground he could have gone with. Well, no, my, my thing is, is it wasn't what he played. It was how it's poorly what he, didn't he plays play. it live. Ah. Like, I don't he, need to see Metallica on, on record, Metallica's 
It's awesome. Yeah. I've never seen him live. I don't. I don't need to Me see either. Metallica live. I, I have I've no desire to live either. But I've always seen Metallica because even when I was young, because I'm not expensive. Expensive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The one time I saw I Metallica live them. was when I cut school to go see them play in the Spectrum parking lot. Oh, was it like them and Rage Against the Machine? No, it was just them. They played a free live show in the Spectrum parking lot. Remember when they did this? The, is like right what when was they, the one where people were ripping seats out of the fucking at the tower? Maybe it was in Philadelphia. You're what? thinking of when they played in Montreal with Guns N' Roses. Yeah, Guns no, N' Roses. No, 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 no. Never mind. I, I'm thinking of... Or no, no, he got burned or some shit. Yeah, yeah that was the one he got the show burned. short and like Guns N' Roses could have came on and like and saved were, the day. And, and, and they didn't. Yeah. They, they did the whole um, hour through and a half one of his like, you know, tantrums. temper tantrums and then like the fans rioted. There was like some riot or something at the fuck. What was it? Them was a Rage Against the Machine. Oh, that's a fucking down my throat band. And people were just fucking pulling seats out of the fucking floor at the Spectrum. Was it the Spectrum or was it the Tower Theater? I think it was. I don't remember any of this. I'm fucked up. That's a Slayer show. Different thing. I saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers at the Spectrum. Quit bragging, dude. (laughs) With Silverchair and the Rentals. Yo, Silverchair, sick. Silverchair and the Rentals. Those opening acts are all yeah. Yeah. Silverchair, not bad. Talk about a show I would love to go to because I can leave early. Like mm-hmm. talking about a show I would love to go to because I would get to leave, leave early. Yeah. That, that show right My there. My friends mm-hmm. had an extra ticket and they didn't. Yo, charge I could hear me. them play Friends of P and then. And I'm home friends at night. Was which McCall? They're friends of the uh, sisters uh, <laughs> from that P. dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The sisters were Damn. Yeah. Yeah. So you're too. saying, yo, if you're down with P, then you're down with me. Do you think they were foreshadowing what just happened to Sean Combs? <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, we're through the looking glass Yo, here. The rentals, the rentals are good. Open your third eye. Yo. The information's there if you know how to look for it. Jesus, here we go. All right, so my last two, I'm going to do at the same time because I have idiot shivers. Jesus. I'm going to fart. We weren't recording this whole time. Didn't need that. (laughs) Didn't need it. Now I'm standing up. You scared of farts? Sit down, you baby. (laughs) Scared of farts, man? Sit down, you baby. Who are your two bands? Uh, Norma. The Blood Brothers. Ugh. I never cared for that. I've never listened to them. How how is that a hot take? That band fucking stung. Dude, they they were were when they first came Cocaine out, dance music. I thought they were fucking. I hated awesome. that white belt shit even yeah. back then. And then the other one is Atmosphere, the rapper. The rapper? Yeah, like you know, feelings rap Dude. in the two thousands. <laughs> Dude, yeah, fucking art, I was art, this, I was, school I was, rap. Yeah, yeah backpacker fuck, shit. Yeah, backpacker like, shit. Like Aesop rock. But I was like, oh my, this guy. Cannibal ox. He's he's talking about feelings. I <laughs> you know like. There are two things that, like, at the time, I was like, this shit's awesome, and I'm yeah. going to love it forever. And I like beats, now and I, I listen, like my feelings. Now, now I listen to it, like, I can no. say that. Uh-uh. I like to say that about the whole genre of rap. In like, high school. I just can't do it anymore. I still listen to a lot of hip-hop. haven't been able to and in, like, 20 years. I listen to I Big had, Pun on the way here. I had, like, my, my baby grand records phase in high school where, like, Jedi mind tricks and, like, yeah, all that shit. Yeah. All my friends. All of them. But, like, they it, were rappers? It, no, they like oh. those bands. It's it stopped after high school. Like even after yeah. I like went to college and was surrounded by like art school kids who thought that shit was the fucking gospel. Yeah. I kind of gave up on it. Your um, hemorrhoids acting up, Tom? This chair is oh. rough on me. I'll well, switch with you if you want, pal. You want to switch? It won't be necessary. Okay. Okay. But is your, your incision still fresh down there? No. Blood Brothers. It yeah. was one of those bands like the people that liked it were corny. So I was just like, I, I never I bothered. I never but bothered. The first, like the seven inches and the first two LPs, I were like, I was like, what was man, this the faint? Yeah, that, they, the were, they were banned. They were, yeah, yeah the they F-E-I? weren't like, no, faint, faint, like F A I N T. I thought it was the fucking same kind of shit. Like, no, that sit, was that was straight up like fucking cokehead dance party that's what I'm saying. bullshit. That, okay, so that, that's what I was more thinking. Well, the Philadelphia area, that shit was huge. Oh, yeah, yeah, there was a, a message board we won't talk about that <laughs> fucking. Why are we allowed to talk about that message board? Because <laughs> Jim podcast is the greatest fucking message board ever. Because Jim, don't know Jim, 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 yeah, Jim Keller could fire up those servers and get us all fucking canceled I don't, in I don't give nanoseconds. Shit. I don't get worried about shit. If Jim Keller came out and said, oh, I'm, "I'm bringing back the archives," I'd be like. Fuck. God there's, damn it. Well, there's, that's the end of me. Dude, the one there, time you told Oda Drama to eat her own pussy, dude, <laughs> <laughs> I think about that and I laugh a lot. Wait, I said that? No, he no, did. I was about to say. I, I don't think And then Red J's 2000s uh, <laughs> profile was just her Chick fil A receipt. <laughs> Her, he was uh, I did have a lot of fun that when website, he told when he told Greg Pollard Greg Pollard's uh po- when his brother uh posted the music video for his group and he just wrote who suggested the fat suit <laughs> <laughs> wow who did that 
Rev J two thousand. Justin dude, Labar, shout yeah, out to him, dude. dude. Oh, I had to get him God. on the podcast. He's fucking, some of my favorite. He's hilarious. When a uh, fr- friend of the show, Jesse, my, my yeah, buddy yeah. Jesse, when he and I used to do the Simpsons trivia nights, Justin was always there, repping super hard too. We would go like head to head with him sometimes. Um, I mean, we always reign triumphant. How's Jesse yeah. doing here? He's, he's, he's good. I he's saw him doing, at, uh, he's doing very well. Party. Yeah. yeah. I've uh, I've tried to punish him into coming on an episode with me, but yeah, I was so far no avail. He's a teacher, right? He's a teacher too. Yeah, I'm like yeah. I'm like I come on here, I show my face. Like the only thing I don't do yeah. is put my name on the yeah. tags of the episode, and like you'll be fine. He's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's his prerogative, but you know. But how do we get on? He'd be a great guest. Oh yeah, the era of centrifuge. I'm sorry, and oh. yeah, bleep that bleep out. Yeah. Bleep that. I will not. Yeah, that the whole. <laughs> coke van thing was like huge yeah that's and a lot of that yeah. is what, again because philly of the people love, yes philly, philly, loves, like philly coke. love Reggie the people that puffed that up yeah oh, they the do kids too yeah well ghetto kids are different i mean it's the same dudes but yeah but yeah they do i was just thinking coke head music if somebody's arranging the full effect <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit. listen a philadelphia get up kids sh- show best was like some of those violent seen. washing you ever saw in your entire life you're I, like, awesome why? i still i still love ghetto I've, kids. I've never been i'm not saying anything bad about the band i'm just saying the, yeah, the yeah, shows yeah. were just i've never been thrown out of a show like literally like uncle filled out the back <laughs> from, from a show other than the get up kids <laughs> So G- that says something. As fat as I am, do you know I actually have been Uncle F- uh, Uncle Field out of a venue before? Really? Yeah. Ozfest. Highly motivated uh, security guards can thousand? show you a thing or two. Uh, moshing to, I want to say it was, was it Damage 2? Played like really early in the lineup? Or was it Stillborn Fest? Damage 2 played Ozfest? Not Ozfest. Still, um, Stillborn, Stillborn Fest. Fest. Oh, I, Ozfest. I did. Yeah, I fucked up. I meant Stillborn Fest. Damage 2 played maybe second. Much harder that, and I ran into a security guard, and I punched him in his face when he pushed me away from As him. As you would. And this dude, seriously, when I say back of my neck, I don't mean like this. I mean by like I was a puppy scruff scruff? my neck. He picked up my fat off the back of my neck. <laughs> I was Forrest Whitaker, and then grabbed, <laughs> grabbed the, the back, back of my jeans, like put his hand in, like in my like in my ass, and like picked me up like that. He knew that shit wasn't gonna Took rip. Took me from all the way from one end of the <laughs> venue to all the way to the what other. Was where the, yeah, it was electric. Yeah, military. to where yeah. the uh, the door was to go outside. Where the stairs Used are. my face to open the, the bar. <laughs> there was one of those bar doors where you had to like. Damn, like that scene in Casino. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Use that <laughs> Use my face to open, the, door. To open the fucking door. And then tossed me down. Uh, it was like a four yeah, stair four steps. Flight. It's like yeah. four or five. Yeah. And I landed on my face. and was like. <laughs> oh my god that's worse than a beating like Jim Carrey when he and falls dude, off the jetway this way. guy this guy wasn't like he was big but he wasn't like super like he-man big and he just was like you don't me up like I was just, no fucking effort just fucking farm strength and I was Probably. in a position where I couldn't like I couldn't move my legs or my arms to like do anything like productive yeah, of course. so I just kind of had to eat shit and take it I was like Aah! like a little fucking stupid fat baby and just launched me out that fucking door yeah. I can't wait to tell Jude that you got kicked out of the electric factory during oh, yeah. damage to set yeah. he's going to love that Yo, who's, cool. who's your next band I used all mine all of my them? last one was E-Town Concrete and everybody fucking was like nope E-Town rules ah uh, fair I got one that no one likes that I loved CKY Code Orange Ugh. Never, never. Yeah. No, I, was I, a, I was an adult when uh, that. That's true. Yeah, I loved that like, band. Yo, you hear him fucking sound off about Code Orange? He's like, fuck Amazon that Jerry Bangor shit. Man, I had a mortgage when they came out, man. Yeah, that's what, yeah. You had children when that shit came out. Is you that, probably did too. Is that the vocalist from Code Orange yelling at us? <laughs> Get back behind your drums. I filled in for a weekend for Agitator one time, and Brad. they and they were playing the same show as we were. And... They were Code Orange kids at that yeah, time, right? And they were to- they were touring in a green pickup truck towing a trailer, and they were awesome. They were they were great hangs, and I liked I liked the shit that they were playing, and I think their tape had just come out on this little label called May- Mayfly that's gone now. But ever since like ever since then, they were meteorically rising. Do you and think then, the fact that you liked them as people jaded you to how? They sounded as a band? No, because I liked them musically, too. Mm. I, that happened at the same time. Yeah, I'd never... I gave them a bunch of tries, and I just did. The, yeah, the, yeah. the Death Wish record came out, and I then King. I Am King came out. That was a cool record. That... that 
record was, was like a watershed I, moment of I my generation. Them for trying always. It was different. It was heavy. I it mean, was very that whole heavy. electronic. Very I, asymmetrical. Like, but I'm also like not. A, I'm not a Godflesh guy. Like I don't. I like it doesn't do it like for me. Life. Like that whole like the whole. I it just yeah. doesn't. It, I thought it was badass when Kodar showed up having like tactical vests on. Oh, at the Grammys. Yeah, you're like, what? Are you, what is happening? Yeah, the one dude had one on. It looked. It, I don't know if any of you guys watched What's The wrong, Office. Buddy? I watched the British oh, yeah. one. Do you, so, do you remember when they they they, they opened the saber stores? Hey, Sabre. Sabre. and they had those like Elliot the triangle pouches that they What's wore wrong? like on a vest, mm-hmm. and then he had a slice of pizza in the one. <laughs> nice. It just made me think of those things. I was like, he's got a slice of pizza in there. I respect that. I would have gone to war for them, but especially around the I am King time. But after, as soon as Forever came out in 2017, I, I was Forever. like, I was I mean, like, I, didn't to it a long I was like, eh, and then. The rest came out, and I was like, mm-hmm, I'm I, done. I always figured like most of the people that said they liked them were saying it because they were friends with them. I never, I always like, oh, they don't really like them. They're just, that's just their boys. They're riding for their boys, and that's fine. I was never convinced that people actually enjoyed that band musically. I, I'm still not. They're pretty, uh, they were pretty big. Jesus, I think they, I'm fucking sick. Elliot. Nice, dude. Elliot. Come here. It's just the Amazon it's guy, the Amazon man. Amazon guy. He's bringing us gifts. I like that the door's open. He's just driving away. He don't go fuck. He's almost dumped his shit on the streets. She could have texted him. Come here. Come here. They don't say it. They didn't have to be a phone. Ah, ah. Thought something was wrong. Dildos are on fire? Are on Who's fire. that, my mom? <laughs> <laughs> was it also my mom? Come here. Sit. Damn, dude. Sit down. Damn, dude. That's a good-ass boy. Oh, oh, I heard that grumble. Oh, you're in trouble. Oh, he's a little being sassy yeah he's a sassy teenager dude. because like, it's like mmm. but back i was like my dog does that too. there's plenty of bands that i <laughs> rode i rode for just because they were friends of mine that i knew from my heart of hearts were terrible but <laughs> how many of them were i in <laughs> um one okay one bad blood yeah sorry no i don't even like that band yeah. so you're you're in good company i still stick by fucking deathbeds that shit, was, that shit ruled. Rage Riot was pretty sweet. Deathbeds could have been so much more. Rage yeah. Riot should have been so much more. Yeah. But yeah, I just figured Code Orange was one of those things. Everybody was just pals with them because I knew they were like real deal hardcore kids. So I saw, okay, everybody's mm-hmm. fucking I, backs are playing. They of were that. in and they brought yeah. many yeah, they, smaller bands on I, tour. They I always, I always they respected them for yes. trying. Because they still do, actually. They still, they still, they still bring. Not small bands anymore, but bands smaller than them. They still they, they bring out. like simulacra to shows and yeah. shit. Yeah. That's how I feel about Knock Loose. I mean, they may not be for me really. That's the same but, thing. But they, they're supporting the shit out of. Yeah. They have also become. They're becoming like a planet of a band. Yeah, they're huge. As far as hardcore is concerned. They're huge now. Listen, I still like that band. Knock Loose? Yes. I, I still unapologetically listen to that band and enjoy them. Like, maybe not like. If I'm just hanging out, like, and I want to put a record on just to like listen to something, but like I'll play him in the gym. Mm-hmm. What's the one with? The, I'll play him while I'm like doing like work what's or like work or something. On? Laugh tracks. I think. Laugh yeah. tracks. That's the, a that's the big a cool one. Record. It's heavy. What are you talking about? Knock loose. Knock loose. Yeah. Same. There's cold ones of those in the fridge. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Amazing. Good. <laughs> now, who who else has what? How many? How many do you guys have left? I got none. Mm-hmm. That's it for me. I'm mm-hmm. tapped. I, I like. I yeah. probably could. If you want to sit here and watch yeah, me, yeah, think. I got if whole you, genres I can talk if you want to, about. If you want to, like, no, you watch to me like to noodle for well, then, a few minutes and like think of something, I probably then, could. Then, would be very uh, I used to listen to, I used to listen to rap. I used to listen to some ska. Yeah, I got a lot of shit. I, I don't. never deny my checker past. Ever. I'll get to my list. <laughs> I'll still, I'll still I listen fucking to hate you so goddamn much for that one. <laughs> never. That was I really good. That so mm-hmm. much. Uh, never. Damn it! I'll get it to took my me, like four seconds to get it, and I was like, <laughs> "You motherfucker!" Mm-mm. Not me. I'll, I'll get to my last band then. Same okay. with Three Eleven. Another one I'll always own up to. <sighs> yeah, I don't. I don't have a problem with Three Eleven. Yeah, Three Eleven's awesome. No, thank anybody. you. Municipal yeah. waste. Oh yeah. That's oh, no. goofball shit. I remember being disappointed because I sweat that drummer. Dave oh, Witt. He's, well, he's, been, some he's been on some bands. of the best fucking records. Yeah. Who's the drummer? Does he not Dave play? Dave doesn't he also oh, play for like Ringworm? Yeah. What? Doesn't he also play for Ringworm? Here's the thing or with him. Did? He's a hired gun and plays for pretty much Whoever. everybody. Yeah. Well, he has the ability, he's that's for sure. He's up banana. 
Black Army Jack. Didn't he do Black yeah. Army Jack? Burnt by the Sun. Discord Burnt by Zach. the Sun. Yo, those Burnt by the Sun records were yeah. fucking and fire. Discord, what's Burnt by the Sun? And what no was pun it? intended. What Human was Remains. What, but what was Boy. the band they also did? It was Burnt Discord by the Sun. No, Burnt by... It was like... Uh, Nora? No. Behind the Sun. No, he different wasn't band. That. That different was, band. Yeah, but Burnside. it was, didn't have like uh, uh, no, that, no, was, dude, that was Burnside. that was pre burn by burn by the sun. Oh, yeah. mind. Um, oh wait, as far as we know, oh yeah, burn by sun was the dude from Endeavor, the singer from yeah. Endeavor. You started yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. But as, as far I as far like, I wanted to like them because we the reason I checked him out is because he is such a good drummer and like his track record was like of what he was taking part in was so like flawless and unfuckwithable. And then that was the one I was like, well, this streak is over. He had a good run. As far as this band is concerned, I, I got to kind of plead the fifth. Like, I know they're stupid. <laughs> the fizzif. Fizzif. Um, There's so many one, two, amendments. Three, so <laughs> the Constitution. I have, a, I have a little cousin who's, like, just Brag. starting to get into cool music. And that's, like, the band he rides super hard for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And every, every, time, fu- I, fun. every fun. time I see him at, Yay. like, a family function, <laughs> he always, like, hits me up. He's like, yo, did you see Municipal Waste? Is play-? Like, he's, like, a high school kid. And I'm just yeah. like, yeah, man. Like, this band's all. I, I don't have the heart to, like, say that band stinks. You know what's Goofball. funny, though, no, right is that, now, like, sure. when he's, like, older, he'll be like, yeah, man, my Uncle Mike, man, he got me in Municipal Waste. <laughs> and he, and he like, loves yes, them. Didn't. Right under the sound like heroin. I'll stand yeah. on it. And Mike will be old as fuck behind him just like... <laughs> I'll stand on it, man. Yeah. Wait, what I miss? I think I totally stepped on. That's not fair. <laughs> we... <laughs> Is making you repeat it going to ruin it? Right. Yeah. All right. No, no I was just like, oh, man, my Uncle Mike got me into Municipal Waste, man. He was cool. And now I like heroin. <laughs> so. That does sound like your nephew, though. Your cousin, whatever. It's spot on. Yeah. I mean, I know he's only like 12 or whatever, but still you're like, no, he's yeah. older than that. He's like going into college. So it's uh, like. Then he's smart enough to know better. Yeah, he is smart enough to know better. He's a good kid. And, like, he's, but he's just getting into. Are you like, sure he's going to college then? <laughs> <laughs> he's like just getting into Community cool shit now. college. Yeah. <laughs> going to college, a.k.a. Trade jail. school. College. Trade school. <laughs> I think. The Sylvan Learning Center. I think Waste was the, was the band that was like. That's pretty cool that you that, shortened it to Waste. That opened the door for extreme music to me. Because I came into Odd. hardcore, a metal guy, like a metalhead. So he used to show up to every hardcore that's show another, with that's a, a That'd be another board. good topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we don't do this at other shows, yeah. too? So I don't bring a whole pizza and a boogie board with me? Oh, man. No, like honestly. My, like my co-host of a different podcast who came to shows with Liberty Spikes and got beat up before. <sighs> And that, that jaded him on hardcore forever, and he was like, nah, fuck you guys. But yo, if he had showed up with pizza, though, people would have been more accepting yeah. of him. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He or fe- candy. He, he or dropped like a bag slice. of M&M's and was Dude. like, you guys want some M&M's? Like, it's like, like yeah, you're regular. He so dropped, I got one of each. Like, oh, he dropped dude. the beach ball. It's like, yeah, that dummy with the slurry spikes, he's actually pretty cool. He brought me <laughs> some now and laters. You know? And then he fixed yeah. my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a cobbler. Oh, I yes. about that. That's like, pretty cool. He cobbling. That's pretty sick. <laughs> he's a weird guy. But I got a, that, I got a, I got a pair of Red Wigs that need some resoling. Does he I know how to him to bang my line? Dude, he knows how to fly a helicopter. Do that for me for free. He knows how to fix one. He knows how to fix whatever package you're supposed to get. He knows how to fly a helicopter, but he's decided to be a cobbler The guy kind of gave me the hairy eyeball when I turned him down. Fuck health benefits, right? He was like, oh, you can get this package where like you'll get maintenance on them for this, that, and the other. I'm like, nah. What, helicopters? Yeah. Helicopters, yeah. <laughs> nice. Whirly birds. Helicopters, that, LLC. That, no, that's all I had for the subject. Those, oh. were, those were my bands, too. Game time? I think it is time for the game. Yeah. Do we know? Well, no, yeah, we got to transition. The bottle. We got to trans <laughs> out of this. Kissing contest. <laughs> well, Full no, uh, no, no homework this week, and we are going to finally get to the Patreon game that we've been talking about for literal months. Well, well honestly, since the start of the podcast. Yeah. Literally months, like over a year, yeah. Yeah. Drunken Ookie Cookie. <laughs> I'll do that I sober. Mean, we've been doing it sober for, I've been, for a while now. So what game well. I've been edging yeah. and edging. Just to have a sip of beer so I can say it's not sober Ookie Cookie. But yeah. <laughs> well, your blood's thinner, so it'll be harder to you know get it up on camera. <laughs> so true. Says you. <laughs> so if you want to watch us play fucking guess who, you got to sign up for patreon.com slash I-R-R-A-N-D-I-L-L. Three dollars a month. Speaking of which, Dennis, do we have any new patrons since the last time I've been on? <laughs> no. I think so. Do we? Oh, yes. Uh, Hal from mm-hmm. uh, Blasphemous, Blasphemous and Engulf. Uh, Jen Smith, another fucking uh, former centerfuser. Oh, yeah. We're, we're yeah. on it. We, we follow each other on it. Oh, yeah. and Scott. 
or uh, uh, Josh, leg nine. Oh, shout uh, out to fucking we, leg nine, dude. We, Listen, got, we got our own comment, Scott. What this, I know, well, his name is Prescott. I determined his name's Prescott. This, uh, me- this, Prescott. Message, this message goes out to leg nine. Fuck yeah. Jen. Yeah. And Hal. What was her name on? Uh, Intern Jen. Intern Jen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need. Uh, Solid. I need the three of you to DM my guys here your mailing addresses. Mm-hmm. You got a bag of wrap snacks coming your way. Fuck Courtesy yeah. of me for subscribing. It's going to happen. Yeah, Matt, will you test it? Living, the living proof. Up? They did. Yeah. They did. So he was housing them shits. They were good. Josh, yeah. I mean, Listen, Prescott will hear this. This is, this is your football phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is your free gift for subscribing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cash in or miss out. Or if you're a little older, the sneaker phone. What came first? I don't know. Oh, it's like a chicken Ooh. and egg thing, wasn't it? Ooh. <laughs> The hamburger phone. Dude, imagine if you had all three. <laughs> if you had all three in your house. I would still oh. fuck with a hamburger phone. What if phone? they all yeah. rang at the same Honestly, time? Honestly, all three? That's going to be another whole podcast. We got to cut it here. <laughs> so why don't you hit that intro you think, to the you To the Patreon! <laughs>